Are you high right now? You've been using drugs or drinking? Okay, good. Sign right there. Pretty fancy fingernails you got there. In this video, we're going to see several interviews with witnesses as well as the final interview with one of the suspects in a double murder. On January 30th, 2011, Johnny and Lisa Straub were murdered during what looked like a robbery. Both victims were found on the ground, their hands duct taped and bags duct taped over their heads. Clark's father attempted to remove the bags and start CPR, but he almost immediately realized it was too late. Lisa's father, who owned the house, later stated that he did not own duct tape, meaning that the murder was premeditated. Okay. I am investigating the homicide of Johnny Clark and Lisa. Okay. I know we talked on the phone like the day of or the day after the homicide, okay? Do you remember? Correct. Yes. We talked over the phone for a few minutes. I want to go back now, okay? I want to go back to the circumstances where you purchased that car from Johnny and what happened with him getting the car back. I need to okay. know exactly what happened. Right. Where, when did, or first of all, how long have you known Johnny? Had you known Johnny? Well, I hadn't known of him since probably 09, but I actually really started maybe hanging out with him in last summer of 2010, the summer of 2010. Under what circumstances did you guys meet? How did you meet? Mutual friends. Who was that? Honestly, I didn't even, I just know him, like, I don't want it's kind of, Like, did you know him through, did you know Lisa first? No. Did you know Johnny's friends and then you guys I hooked think, up? Honestly, I think I was hanging out with his cousin. Who's that? Lacey. Okay. Okay. So you guys started hanging, I mean, did you guys was this a did you guys was this a physical relationship? Were you guys ever dating or no. sleeping with one another? We, we slept with each other once. But you did. It wasn't anything. <laughs> yeah. Well. No, I know, but it wasn't like no. Is this while he was seeing sleep? Seeing no, Lisa? no, no, no. They had broke up for a while. Okay, so they were really like touch and go, like all right, back and forth. So they had broke up, and then you slept with Johnny, but only once. Once, yeah. Okay. All right. Did you use with Johnny pills? Yeah. Smoke weed? Yeah. Did you buy your weed from Johnny? No. Did you buy your pills from Johnny? No. <laughs> Who'd you buy your weed from? Casino is pretty open about her drug use and fling with Clark, but her eye movements and nervous laugh after several of her statements say that she may be hiding something. I mean, I know all the players in this thing. Yeah, I, I really do. do. No, I know you do. But see, there's a lot of, like, with this whole situation, like, you, I'm from the east side. I'm not from the south side. So, like, a lot of people over there I know, I really don't know them, though. Because okay. they, they won't, like, talk to me. They won't have nothing to do with me because I am from the east side. All right. All right. So, okay, after Johnny and Lisa broke up, you guys sleep together. Did you still see Johnny every so often at a... We just like in track, like bumping each other, like out and about, you know. Okay. But like we didn't really hang out or nothing like that. Johnny had some good friends. Johnny had a lot of good friends. Right. Uh, he had. Uh, well, one one of his good friends was Tiffany. Did you know Tiffany? Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I know Tiffany. <laughs> Her father, Charles' father, was killed at my house. So I know Tiffany. Okay. And we don't get along. Don't you don't get along with so. Tiffany. No. Uh, you got arrested that night. Yeah, for obstruction of justice. For what? Not saying anything? Yeah. Not talking? Yeah. And they I, no, they dropped they, the charges. They wanted, to, they wanted me to identify the people that had walked into my house, and I didn't know them. Okay. I, I knew of them from seeing them at like house parties, but I never actually, like, hi, how you doing? What's your name? Okay. All right. So, yeah, that all happened at your house. Yeah. Well, you you didn't own that house, though. So. No, it was an apartment. Yeah, it be an apartment. Okay. Um, so you know Tiffany, you don't like her. 
She doesn't like you? No, I don't have a problem. I don't have no personal problem with her. I don't have any reason not to like her. I think okay. she doesn't like me because everything with that, um, Donald and then everything that's going on with her and Aaron. Because okay. Aaron's my ex-boyfriend. So. Okay, we're going to get to that too. Yes. Okay. All right. So you, do you know Zach? You said you know yeah, Zach. You've Zach's known Zach. best friends. Okay. Let's you know, talk about Zach. He's young. That's one of my very best friends. <clears throat> When you say best friends, you are... I just trust him. You're older. Yeah, I'm 21. I mean, you're four or five years older than Zach. Yeah. How can you guys be such good friends? How'd you guys meet? Through EP. Stranger Than the Age Gap is the timing of the relationship. In February alone, there were over 400 calls between Casino and Burkett, starting just days after the murders. But... Zach, he doesn't, <clears throat> I don't know how he is if, when you've talked to him, sir, when he's with his mom, like, he might play the part of trying to act young, but he, like, he doesn't have, like, a young mind. We talk, um, I don't know how to explain it, honestly. Like, he acts he older be, than he is? Yeah, he's streetwise? He's, street he's mature. He's mature. He's mature. Okay. You know, obviously, he has a baby, so. Right. <clears throat> well, I have some people that are 30 years old kids that aren't mature, but, right. you know. Well, I know. So, Zach, did you uh, use pills with Zach? Like a while ago. Percocets and stuff? Yeah. Do you still use that stuff? No. You're not on perks anymore? Okay. I um, got arrested last month, and I had to sit in here for like a week, and it made me detox. You got arrested on the Oregon stuff? No. What'd you get arrested for? Um, well, they charged with drug trafficking, but it got amended. So they had to, like, drug abuse, maybe, I think. I don't even remember what they charged me with. What other friends of Zach's do you know? You know Anthony Watson? Chris Watson? I know Chris Watson, yeah. How do you know Chris Watson? Just from around. How'd you meet him, if you don't know Anthony, his brother? Oh, you're talking about Tone. Oh, Tone, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. I don't, Tone. It's just the so you know Tone and Chris? Yes, I know them. How do you know those guys? Being on the South End. <laughs> I don't know how to, like, a lot of these people I know are just from, like... Just hanging with other yeah, people? Yeah, you know, and you just randomly meet, and then if you start talking to that person, you guys get cool and hit it off, and you stay in numbers and okay. you're friends. All right. <coughs> Ed Murray? You know little Ed? Ed with the... Yeah. Yeah. Kind of red, yeah. See that as well. A lot of people I don't know their last names, so. Okay. What about Yaki? What's that Yaki's dude's name? Matt. Matt Yaki? Yeah. You know Matt? Yeah. Know him on site? Yeah, he's a good kid. He, he's straight as a freaking arrow. I swear yeah. he is. <laughs> I literally got to laugh because he's just like, he's corny. Because he's in the um, National Guard. You're bigger than he is. That's what I'm saying. But you could probably kick his ass, <laughs> couldn't you? <laughs> I know you could. <laughs> All right. So you know, you know, basically, the same people Zach knows. Right. Yeah. So we had like basically because I was around like for a few years over there. Okay. So it's kind of like we all overlap each other. So when you were when you were, I mean, did you and Johnny actually date? No, we never dated. We never like went out together. That was like a fluke. It just happened. It was a fluke. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it just happened. Only but you were around him enough to know what Johnny was like. Yeah. You know. You like knew, his character? You knew, right, yeah. right. I heard Johnny liked to talk. Yeah. Is that true? He, like, exaggerated a lot of things. Like what? Well, what did he ever say to you? Like, what He exaggerated about, like, money and just, like, little stupid stuff that really doesn't matter, but it can't do no harm, maybe, but it matters because it's not the truth. So it's still, you're not being 100%. Mm -hmm. But honestly, though, at the same time, though, I don't know... I mean, maybe he wasn't exaggerating about money before, and like what, what just his say? status in life, basically. What do you say? Like what? Like what would he say? Like what? Maybe I'm trying to think. I hear his voice in my head too. Oh, that's just crazy. Um, he would just talk about like he just gas money, basically. He never been like saying no dollar amounts or anything, of course. But he's always like, you know, he's not hurting out here. But I think he really was though. Yeah. Because I know he had a really, really bad pill habit. I mean, it was yeah. bad. But to the point where he was, you know, 
Did you? So you knew Johnny before he started seeing Lisa too? No, I no. didn't. No. No. Ever since I've known Johnny, it's always been Johnny and Lisa. Okay. Did um. When they broke up, Johnny and Lisa, he was still living with his mom and dad then. Yes. Did you see Johnny much after he moved in with Lisa? When he moved to her mom's house. Yeah. No, I, me and Johnny. I, the last time I talked to Johnny, it was probably, the, excuse me, <clears throat> the first or second week of December, maybe. If that's even pushing it. Okay. I think it was the first week. So he had moved in with Lisa by then. Yeah, I don't honestly, I don't know, hmm. but I know that the only thing I know him and Lisa living together, said like you know before this incident happened, was they had an apartment together by Southwick Mall. Right. And I knew that they lived together there, but I didn't know he was living with her at her parents' house. While describing how well she knows his character and saying that he isn't always entirely honest, Casino fails to mention the fights she has had with Clark. She might eventually admit this if the detective presses her about it, but she's certainly not volunteering the fact that she had problems with the victim, understandable, but could cause her trouble. Had you ever been to Lisa's house? No. Had Zach her apartment, ever? yes, but not her parents' house. Not her parents' house? No. Zach had never taken you there? No. I don't even know where it's at. Okay. Um, you talk to Zach a lot on the phone. Mm -hmm. A lot. I know. I call him all the time. It's my little. What, I call you, what little are you guys brother. talking about? I just tell him random weed? stuff. No, I don't get my pills every day for him though. That's what's so crazy. But so you've talked you've talked to Zach a lot yeah. since this whole thing's happened. That's like I would. I, that Zach's like my family knows Zach. My kids know Zach. Like, they love him. What's, what's Zach been like since the homicide? How's he been active? The same. Same as always? Yeah. Well, I know Zach's got a real bad pill problem. Oh, man. That's why I'm glad he's a juvenile right now. Yeah. I just actually, unless they took my letter, there's, um, I wrote Zach a letter, and I told him, like, you know, I think this is what, is, everything happens for a reason, you know. Maybe you can't see the reason right now. Maybe 10 years down the road, you'll finally be able to see it. But everything does happen for a reason. And that little 10 days or however many days he has, you use that to detox. And that by the time you come out, you'll be fine. And you won't, you know, be still having to go through this and argue over money with your mom and just stupid stuff, you know. And it's just, it's, un it's not worth it. Has he, has he told you that we've interviewed him a couple times? Yeah, I'm, I'm real close with his family. Really did he, close. Did like he his tell grandma you loves me. Okay. Of, he, about whatever, I forgot her name. Novella? Yeah, Novella. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's granny to me. <laughs> did uh, did he tell you he took a polygraph? Yeah, he said he took a polygraph, and you guys said he was too high, but he said he was tired. I don't know. Well, See, this is what Zach, Zach only tells me certain things because for some, he knows that I'm gonna ride his ass. Period. Point blank. Like I'm gonna, I might not be a perfect person, but I know what mistakes I've made in life, and if I can prevent him from making any of the same mistakes I've made, or even start going down the same path that I've made. I'm not gonna let him. Like I'm not gonna personally sit there and just watch him fuck his life up. Like I'm not going to, cause I love Zach. So I'm gonna sit there and he knows if he does something that's messed up, I'm gonna tell him. I'm gonna tell him about himself. If he's disrespectful to his mom, me and him get into it, and I'm I'm, I'm gonna beat your ass, Zach. I don't care how big you are, you know. And his parent, his mom. I'm sorry, his mom and his grandmother. They both love me. They both, you know, always pull me to the side. Like, will you please? Just try to help Zach, and you know I've been trying to get him in school. This, all this, and it's I don't know. Well, um, so Zach told you about the time we picked him up and we took him for a polygraph, and he fell asleep, so they canceled it. He tell you about that? Yeah. He tell you about the other one he took? No. But I don't. He might have, and I might just not like. Cause he, I just know polygraph. I just well, I try not to talk to people about this situation, sir, because it's like. I don't want to be at other people's problem with it, if whatever they're into with it, or what, you know. So and Zach never told you that he took another polygraph and he flunked? Uh, Ever told you that? Okay. That's crazy. Does that surprise you? <laughs> huh? Yeah, it does. It does surprise it's, you? It only surprised me. But then again, he, I don't know like, I don't know how polygraph tests work, you know. I know well, they go polygraph, the right, they work off... With your body, your body really. the way your body reacts to certain things, yeah. like it's things you can't hide. Right. So, like if I gave you one and asked you about something and 
I mean, you sat there and said you tried to breathe and all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, no, said, it's not like the movies. Uh, no, <laughs> well, you know, I may sit here, I may believe you when you say no, or you may yeah. say something to me and I may believe you. But you can't fool that. Yeah, because it's... But anyway, so I just thought I'd throw that out there. Yeah, Zach, he took another one. He didn't fall asleep or anything, and, and he flunked. He flunked that test. So it's just interesting. You're a close friend of his, and you guys talk a lot. And I was just wondering, maybe he brought something up to you that might be of use to me. Well, okay, think about it. Let's go back. Let's go back. I'm, not, I'm sorry, sir. I'm just looking right. I, I think it's something like, you know. Okay, let's go back. Let's talk about the car. Okay. All right, so That's, you, where, when did you start talking to Johnny about buying his car? <laughs> it wasn't that I started talking to him about it. This is the situation. Okay. I was, this is the time I was actually living with Zach. Like, staying in his mother's house for a little bit. Like, you were? Yeah, I wasn't like moved in, all my stuff's here. So, but okay. I was in between places. So, you're sleeping with Zach, too? No, I was staying at his house. You're staying at Zach's yeah, house? Yeah, I'm staying at his house. You know, he's a juvenile. Yeah. You sleep in the same room with him? No, that's why okay. I'm, I'm right. really good with his friends with his mom. Right, and you're his, friends with her. So, okay. She knew that I was in between places to stay, so I stayed there for a couple weeks. And um, Johnny came over the one night. And it was two days before Thanksgiving, I want to say. Okay. Maybe three days. Two days, yes, two days, because the next day was Black Friday. The next evening, everybody went shopping for the Black Friday thing or something. It was like, yeah, two days before Thanksgiving. Well, <clears throat> we were all at Zach's house, you know, smoking. And um, we go to go to IHOP. Oh, airport. Excuse me, sir. <clears throat> and, um, Who goes to IHOP? Me, Zach, and Johnny. Okay. Johnny had me drive there because he couldn't drive. So I drive there and we get, somehow we just get talking. And he was like, if you want to buy this car, you can. And I was like, oh, really? Like, so you guys went in Johnny's car, but you drove? Yeah, I drove to IHOP. In Johnny's car? Mm -hmm. With Johnny, though. Okay. Johnny wanted me to drive, but he just couldn't drive. So I drove his car. Okay. And we talked. And he, he brought up, he said he, he told me I could buy his car if I wanted to. And I said, well, you can let me you know, get the money together a little bit. But did he say how much at that time? Yep, 1500 Okay. And that's the only reason why I bit down on the offer was because it was an 06 even for 1500 Like, But this is the thing, though. I told Johnny that night because he was kind of like, hi. And I told him, like, I'd rather wait till tomorrow morning till you sober up because I don't want to give you this money. And you say, fuck me, basically, because I want to go get the title notarized, you know, before I do anything. Okay. So, <clears throat> the whole time, the whole entire time where I, I mean, basically, he, I felt like he was putting me in a corner because he kept begging me to buy the car off him. Like, he really need the money. I really need the money. I really need the money. I'm like, okay, well, I had the 1500 but I didn't want to give him all my money, so I told him I'll give you half. Where did you get that kind of money? <laughs> Where'd you get fifteen hundred dollars? Just from like you know holidays and stuff. No. But um. No. Again, Casino gives that nervous little laugh and avoids eye contact when the detective asks her where she got that much cash. I don't know if it's from around, but um. So I tell him that you know I'd rather wait. He he just passed through me. Will not stop. Like he's begging me. Like he's really literally begging me. Like, and I was Johnny, like, I, I mean, what if you just, you know, take off with my money, you know? And <clears throat> so by the time we got back to Zach's house, we reached an agreement that I'd give him half money, seven fifty. Well, I'd give him seven fifty. Okay. Yeah, that's half. And um, that I would give him the other seven fifty. And when I had it, basically. And then okay. it was a big situation with his mom. His mom is like, certifiably crazy. You're because talking about? My day? Yeah. Yeah, certifiably crazy. Like, before this happened, she was nuts. Like, okay. And she just, I don't know, she don't like anybody, and she always has something negative to say about people. She protective of Johnny? I, it would be protective, yes, because that's his mom, but at the same time, like, it's, um, like, incorrect, you know, like how she comes, kind of, like, she assumes stuff a lot. Or she hears something from her like nieces and nephews 
she ought to like, take heed to it, believes anything they say. Well, not everything you hear on the streets is true. true. 90, 95% right. of it is bull crap. When you were you with know? Johnny in the past, when you had spent time, did she call him a lot? Was she calling him would, on the phone? Yeah, it would depend, though, like, on, like what the situation was when he had left being around her. Mm-hmm. Like, if they were okay, like, on good terms, she would just leave him alone. So they'd fight and argue? Yeah, because she, like, I'm, like, she's, like, real life. Overbearing. Like, yeah, really overbearing, though. But she just assumes stuff a lot, like, okay. and it's automatically she always has something to say about everybody that, and you she don't even she don't leave the house, okay. like you don't you stay on face she gets on Facebook all day long that's all she does, and like she's on like she's a, there's a website, just she's crazy for and I understand like right now you know I, being a mom myself like I couldn't imagine I could not even fathom what she was going through, you know not only losing your son but losing his girlfriend who he was also close with, right. I mean that's. You, you're not supposed to outlive your kids, you know, and that's like one of the worst things that you, I can even think of feeling in my heart. So, I, I mean, I do understand, like, now, but at the same time, before, you were just as bad, you know, and you just directed it towards Johnny, and, like, she would flip out on him, though, like, freak out on him, where Johnny would be like, I can't deal with her. And I'm, that's probably part of the reason, honestly, why he wouldn't, you know, turn to drugs like he did because his home life was stressful. His dad is, you know, tough to, I know the family Johnny comes from, um, probably influenced him to live the lifestyle that he lived. That's possible. That's you know? possible. Um, he probably owed money to a lot of people. He might have. Like, I'm, well, t- I'm, I'm not talking about like a few hundred, I'm probably like thousands. Well, we'll discuss that in a second. So you give Johnny the 750, 750 right then? Yeah, that night. I gave it to so him. So you what, had to go home and get it and brought it back? No, I was staying with Zach. Oh, so you got it from yeah. Zach's house, you gave him the money. Mm-hmm. Did you take the car right then? Yeah. How'd Johnny get home? I dropped him off. So you took the car and dropped Johnny off. Okay. At home? <clears throat> yep, at his mother's house. And then you immediately got a phone call from mom? Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> was she pissed that you bought that car? Yeah. What exactly did she say to you? Now she now I'm I mean I know I've talked to her about this. Yeah. Did she say that you drugged her him? That you drugged him and then got the car from him or something like that? She said I yeah, that's what she said, but I didn't drug Johnny though. That's what my thing um she has like she had like a she knew what Johnny was doing. She didn't know really. She knew. I don't know. If she knew about the perks, like like as bad as they were. Right. You know, like I don't. Johnny's dad, I think, knew what was going yeah, on. Yeah, because he was a lot easier to right. to handle, you know, and right. to talk to and stuff like that. And you know, he he wasn't mad all the time like Maite, so he wouldn't. He didn't have that cloud of judgment. Okay. Casino paints a negative picture of Clark's mother something she has done so far with every female connected to the case. Taking that into consideration, her statements may have some personal bias and may not be entirely accurate. All right, so you drop them off at home, you get into it with Maite. You take the car, Do you? how long do you stay with Zach after that? Well, that was the week of Thanksgiving. Actually, I moved out of there the first week of December because I got a house. That's All why right. I was staying there because I was waiting to save up. So where'd you to move to? To the east side on Barry Street. What was the address? 707 Barry. So you moved to 707 Barry with the car? Yeah. Okay. So now you've got the car. Well, see, the, the, that night everything was like, you know, on eggshells with my tape about the car. Right. But the next day, things were fine. Like, it wasn't, it was a big deal. But it wasn't a big deal because she knows Johnny made that decision, and okay. she couldn't. Well, it was Johnny's car. Exactly. He bought that money with his money, or yeah. bought that car with his money. She was just trying to, you know, be a mom, and I understand right. though. She and was I looking out to make like, sure he didn't. Honestly, take. I didn't even want to buy the car. Like, I felt Johnny just would not stop. Like he was so incessant. It was just, I just like shut up here, take it. Like I don't even care. I do need the car. I got the money for it, so just shut up, please. Okay. Like, so did you ever, you never got it transferred into your No, name. never okay. got it switched over because so, I was going to wait until I finished paying him. All right, so you didn't pay him the rest because? The car, the tire fell off. 
Did you hit something? No. Did you no. hit a no, pothole? No, did you I hit a guardrail? Driving. No, I didn't hit anything. How long after you bought the car did the wheel fall off? Like a week and a half. Maybe two weeks. Ago. This is after you moved to Berry Street? Yeah. Okay. So, and <laughs> wheel falls off. I wasn't even driving the car because I don't have my license. I was having my friend drive it because he's licensed and insured. And we're on Detroit coming like underneath the viaduct. Well, fearing turn to Detroit um, by Nettie's. That's exactly where we were, right in front of Nettie's. And he, he was actually slowing down. And I smelled like um, burnt rubber. So I'm like, what the heck is that smell? And the next thing I know, we're just like, boom, boom. And it's just like, out. And when my mechanic looked at it, he said whoever had the struts done, and when they, whoever did the struts, the mechanic was like a shot a mechanic. Okay. And they put it back on, it made like the tie rod snap. So it just like snapped. Okay. It was some so or something. you tell Johnny the wheel falls off? Yeah. So did you call him right away? No. Yeah. And you that tell night. him? I told him that Fix night. the car? No. What'd you tell him? I told him I, wasn't, I didn't know at the time that that's what, what was wrong with so until the next day I had my mechanic come look at it. And then me and Johnny actually got into an argument over the car around this period of time. Okay. Because he wanted the rest of the money for the car. And I told him, like, well, it's broke. It's my mechanic says it'd be a thousand dollars to fix it. I said, this, that, whatever. This was a pre existing problem. I said, it's kind of bull crap. And uh, I said, so we exchanged words and I, he came and got the car. His, well, his father came and got the car. Do you remember when that was? Um, the first week of December, second week. I so, Mr. Know. Clark. Mr. Clark, yes. Although she tries to act casual, Casino has been very upset about the car. Phone logs show quite a few calls to Clark, and witnesses describe her as angry. Most people would be in her situation, but then again, most people wouldn't drop that kind of money on a car they didn't want in the first place just to shut someone up. Came and got the car? Yes. On Berry Street? Yeah. How do you get it out of there? I think they had it towed. Okay. Did you make any comments? Did, I? Did you threaten anybody? I didn't threaten him. What? I told him that car was a bitch. That's all I told him. And I, that's still to this day, I feel bad that I even said that because that's, I don't think it's fucked up that I said that. What did you say, actually? That car was a bitch. Because he took the car from me. You never threatened Johnny? No, I, I want my threaten. fucking 750 back? Or? No, I told him I want my money back because he what said he was going to give it to me. And then after they had got the car back, and his mom, I don't know if his mom, because I heard her the whole time saying it, about she broke the car, she has to pay for it, da da da, da. That's, you, and that's not you, fair. Were you talking to AP at all during this time, Aaron? During what time? Like all this is going on with no, Johnny in the like, car? I mean, I didn't talk to him about the situation. Did you go to AP and tell him, look, that fucking Johnny Clark won't give me my 750 no, back? No. A me and AP's relationship is And like then that. AP would have threatened Johnny? Oh, no. Give, give her her money back or no. I'm going to kill you? AP wouldn't even... Okay. Not, I'm, I'm asking. No, but I'm just saying, the reason I, I'm just... Because me and AP's relationship is just, he hates me. Like, he well, fucking okay. hates me. And that's like the last thing he would do for me. Like, he won't have nothing to do with me. Like, we talk on the phone every so often, but it's never about, oh, how you doing? How's your life going? You know, it's more like, you know, I talk to him a few minutes, and I try to joke around with him, he's like, fuck the bitch, and hangs up on me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is, though. Well, he is a man of few words, and he is very he direct, is. isn't he? Yeah. He's I mean, very, he tells the truth. He does. And that, that's all I know of AP. Right. He, I've, never right. Heard, I've never heard him tell a lie. I've talked to him a couple times. Yeah, I've never heard him tell a lie. He, he just don't, and he, he don't uh, care. And he, you know, he's not a big fan of the police either. No, he's and not. I, and he won't lie to you. No. He'll tell you. He'll come right out and say, I'm not a snitch. I'm not going to tell you shit. Yeah. So, which, got to respect that about the guy. Right. I mean, he's honest. Yeah. So, doesn't beat around the bush that much. Right. You know, I polygraphed him. Did you? Yeah. Zach told me that you were... That you had wanted to, but I don't know yeah. what have ever came of that. I'm sure he passed that because I know AP. He, he, hmm. Oh, actually, that night of the incident, I told you on the phone. We were IMing each other on Facebook. And you can only do that from like what? a computer. Casino just barely squeaks by with this reasoning as Facebook Messenger came out just three months after this interview. 
Okay. Not so, a phone. Like, you know how you can get on the internet. All right. Well, let's wait. I, I want to go. I want to talk to you about that. But so he came and got the car. His dad did. His dad did. Yeah. Was I didn't see Johnny. All right. Was the car issue over then? Yeah. After that, after I told him, like, let me get my money, he said, he told me he was going to give it to me. Okay. After about a week, I just chalked the money. I basically I chalked the money and I gave him the car. You All know right. what I'm saying? I paid for the car. Okay. You know, I thought I had a car. I took the loss. No big deal. I've taken bigger losses than that in my life. So, 750 to know better not to fuck with you. That's fine. All right. So, you're staying with Zach. I was before. Around this time. This is When he had took the car back, though, this is when I say I'm buried. I have my own house. Okay. But that's in December. Yeah. And stuff. Who were you dating? Who were you seeing? You weren't seeing anybody then? <laughs> no. Well, oh, this is, no. He was in jail. The Who? guy I was seeing. Deshaun. Okay. He was in jail. Deshaun Belcher. Yeah. What was he in jail for? Can't have yeah. But everything was dismissed. Why? In jail. Because they didn't kidnap the lady. They were trapping at her house, and she was a fiend. And she got mad because they were giving her no dope, probably. And so you're saying that they, she allowed him to do it. Yeah, she allowed And then when she, they, when they, she they, wasn't getting any more dope, she got anymore. out. Okay. She, like, went to right. an AA meeting. Or, All right, so you're saying. she you wasn't seeing, mentally stable either. I know that. Well, then they, they took advantage of her, though. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you well, agree? Because well, I'm not mentally stable, and I wouldn't let nobody take advantage of me. Oh, Seems pretty serious. stable to me. Mm-hmm. Right now. <laughs> Is that him? Yeah. All right. So you're seeing Deshaun. I got a lot of stuff. I guess so. About you. I bet you do. There's all sorts of stuff. In there. Yeah, my mug shot from the Oh man. Yeah. You know, Look at this innocent little girl. I wasn't. Even t- what happened to her? Thank God. Well, I tell you what. I've read some reports about you, Alex. I bet you have. Man, oh man, what are you doing with an AK-47 assault rifle? It wasn't my gun. Are you a terrorist? (laughs) Isn't that funny? I mean, that's the that's the gun of choice of our enemy, right there. And there, here you are. You're not even big enough, strong enough to hold one of those. It wasn't mine. That's why. Yeah. These aren't my pants, right? No, they are. Oh, no. Have you ever heard that before? Yeah, but um. Okay. Well, all right. So. That was the first case I ever caught. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. So, let's talk about Deshaun for a minute. You guys are dating, right? You're seeing each other, but he's in jail. Well, let's... All right, you're dating Deshaun, but he's in jail. When does he get out of jail? Mm, the end of January. <clears throat> the middle of January. Yeah. I know his birthday is January 14th, and I know he wasn't out for his birthday. Okay. So I think he might have got the 18th. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. The end, yeah, it was like the last two weeks of January. All right. You guys are pretty serious then? I mean, you're spending a lot of time together no, after he gets out? No? Okay. No. Honestly, the only reason we stayed together while he was in jail was because we were together when he got caught the case. And um, I didn't feel like right just leaving him in jail. Okay. I didn't want to be with him anymore. When he got out, like we didn't, he stayed with me like once or twice, and that's it. I mean, I seen him like during the day. We'd be hanging out, driving around, and kicking it and stuff. But it wasn't like I didn't want to be with him really anymore. He knew it. Okay, so here you are. He gets out. Now you were with him the night of the homicide, though. Yeah, I yeah because yeah because I went and picked my friend up and dropped her off at her dude's house. A loser. And um, we went back to my house. Do you remember what you did the weekend before? No. Why do you remember that night so vivid? Because I remember the next day talking to you. Okay. And I had called him to be like, I didn't know what was going on, you know? So and you, he, was, he told me, like, you didn't fucking do anything. Don't have anything to worry about. You so you're, me. all right, you're with Deshaun the night of the homicide. And what were you guys doing? Driving around. You're just Smoking. driving around? Smoking. <clears throat> Smoking. Weed. Not exactly the best alibi, and certainly not airtight. But if she was making it up, she probably would have gone with something that wasn't illegal at the time. Did you see anybody? Whose car were you in? Oh, I grabbed this truck. 
What's your grandpa's name? Um, Danny Patrick. Where's Danny Patrick to live? On the airport. What kind of truck was it? 2003 GMC Sierra. Is that the truck you got in trouble in? In Oregon? No. no. Or where'd, where'd you get in trouble in that truck? Um, Manure Street. At the Wendy's. When I got set up with three employees. Oh, that's when you got caught with the drugs. Wait. Is that when you got caught with the yeah. drugs? Okay, that's just, did they take it? No. Oh. It's parked though. That's my truck for a little bit. It's parked now. <laughs> that is your truck? He, he gave it to me when he was supposed to, but he probably won't give it to me now. How old's your grandpa? 60s. He'll be 60, 60, 65. Did he know you had your truck that night? He had that, you had that truck that night? Yeah. All right. So he knew I had it until I caught the You're with the show on night of the homicide. You're out driving around smoking weed. What else did you do? I probably went to the the, the little corner store on the east side, the um, east side mini mart, like fifteen times because I always go there. It's like everybody on the east side. Did you me. ever come across the river that night? You had to go to the north where he lives and the pig Mallory up. To Deshaun's house. Yeah. Where was Deshaun living? Putnam, maybe. All right. So you pick up. You picked up Deshaun first. What time did you pick him up? No, I don't remember. I know he was with me that day. I don't remember how he got with me. I don't know if he was with me from the night before that, too. And I just never dropped him off. Or if I just picked him up randomly and just smoked weed with him. I don't, I don't honestly remember how yes. he got... I don't remember how he got with me. Okay. But is it but dark it out? No, it was during the daytime. All right, during the day. And he's with you all day? Mm -hmm. Did you guys eat? Probably Did you go out to eat? No, we didn't go sit down nowhere. So you're with him, then you're with him all evening? You're still just driving around smoking weed. Yeah. You didn't go anywhere to do this. <laughs> you're just driving around all evening. That's what I. That's but you're I still you still don't you're not you don't want to be with them though. No, because we were cool like we hang out and stuff. I don't have a lot of friends like that I can sit here and I trust a hundred percent to really be around me like that. And Deshaun, at the time, we were you know like I didn't tell him I didn't want to be with him, but I really like I was I was kind of like. Slowly, like, dissipating from him, like, you know, okay. not staying with me as much. And I was trying to let him down easy because he did just get out of jail. I did stick with him the whole time he was in jail. So I probably, like, to him, I didn't want to have him look like, oh, I'm a fake person because this whole time he was in jail, and I held him down. And as soon as you get out, I don't want nothing to do with you. Okay. So, like, it was just a delicate situation for all me. All right, like, so you're with him all evening. You're driving around. You're smoking weed. Um... How late in the evening did your friend call you? What's your friend's name? Mallory. Okay. So what, Mallory calls you? Yeah. Remember what time? Uh, it was late. I mean late. Like one, two, three, I don't know, somewhere. Between midnight and three. Okay. Did you talk to Zach that night? I might have for some perks. About some perks. I don't know if he called me and asked me if I can get any perks. And, uh, but that was like a, you know, that wasn't anything else. Because I always talked to that here okay, about perks, you know. That's when I was still really like taking perks. Perks sets. <clears throat> okay. Did um, Deshaun take perks? No. No? Just like smoke weed? Yeah. You guys drink it or anything? No, I don't drink. Okay. So Mallory calls you, it's late. What does she, what, what she want? She wants a ride. Wants a ride where? Always. To the west side, I think that's the west side, by Central and Detroit. What, she gonna go see her boyfriend or something? Yeah. What was his name? Marquise Lang. Ugh, I just don't what is know. it? Marquise, I think. But that's not a boyfriend anymore. Marquise what? I don't know. You don't know his last name? Black man, white man? Yeah, he's black. Okay. Deshaun a member of a gang? Not like, I don't think so. Is Marquise? No. I don't think, no, I, don't, I know he's not. Deshaun's still living over in Fulton?
Casino needs to work on her tells because it's becoming a dead giveaway. Whenever she tries to hide something, she laughs. She's oddly hazy on things, like the name of her boyfriend, and yet she's pretty insistent that all they did was drive around. If she can't even remember someone's name, surely it's possible that she's forgotten they stopped somewhere? Yo, that's a street forward, thank you. I don't know why. Putnam. Is it Putnam? You got arrested on Fulton. Oh, yeah. That you a member of a gang? Did I ask you that? I don't know. I honestly don't know if you did or not. I don't get into gang stuff. What's your boyfriend's name right now? I don't have a boyfriend. You don't? No. Who's the father of your child? Nate Popovich. How many kids do you have? Two. Okay. He's white. Okay. Oh, I I'm, just, nice. I, I'm sorry. I, just, well, I don't care what color. I know. You know it doesn't matter. I'm being white though. Alright, so the night of the homicide, you're with you're with Deshaun, you're driving around. He'd been out for a couple of weeks, maybe? Mm -hmm. Okay. When you would talk to Zach, did he ever bring up about Johnny staying with Lisa? No. But he knew, like, me and Johnny weren't really cool at the moment. So, like, but not we weren't cool, but we just, I didn't have anything to say to him. He didn't have anything to say to me. The way I look at it. Were you still like, pissed at John? Did you still want your 750 back? Well, yeah, everybody wants their money back. But, I mean, I didn't, I wasn't going to act on it. I didn't say anything to him anything else. You didn't but say anything to Deshaun about the 750? Did Deshaun know about the 750? I don't know if he really, like... Well, you were I don't think he knew time. the whole situation about it, but I think he knew, like... Did you ever... I I think he knew I had some... I was supposed to have 750 owed to me from somebody. I don't think he knew who it was. He'd never met Johnny, never seen Johnny. So, like, he, You think Deshaun had taken it upon himself to go try and get that money back? He didn't even know... He wouldn't even know where to start, you know? Now I know he wouldn't do that. Like, well, I can't say I know he wouldn't, but, you know... Did you ever see in front of Deshaun, that motherfucker owes me $750 <laughs> no. and I want it back? No. You never said that. No. Did Zach ever call you and say, "I know where you, I know where we can make some money. No. I know where there's a safe. No. Get Deshaun to do no. this." And plus, like, I guess, no, that situation, I wouldn't involve anybody else. Like, that's not something you do. It's hey, man. Do you know who went over to Johnny and Lisa's house and killed him? No, him? I don't. Like, I really don't. I have no idea. I don't even. Don't. My speculation is it people you wanted to. And Did I you see I Aaron that him. night? I thought I'd seen him, but honestly I don't know if it was him or his brother because he didn't say anything okay. to me. They were in a car and I just seen like a profile view. Okay. Alright. Who do you know that Johnny owed money to? Who did he owe money to? I'm the only person that I know he owed money to. Well, you said my speculation he, is that he, that he owes people, money, like that he was getting his drugs off of money, like not like a hundred dollars, not a few hundred, not seven hundred, like probably like several thousands. You know Paula Randa? No. Cousin Paulie. Paulie, I know of him. I don't okay. know him. Never met him. I've seen him. Never like hi. My What's he do? Alex. I don't. Heard he deals a little bit work. of weed. Yeah, I don't think he works. Okay. So I don't know. I know it's Johnny's cousin, though. If I asked you, everybody that I've talked to that's involved in this investigation, I've asked for a DNA sample, would you give me one? Yeah. Would you? Yeah. When asked about a DNA sample, Casino sounds very confident and doesn't laugh. She does end up giving a sample, and it does not match the DNA found at the scene. But when asked about taking a polygraph, the laugh returns. If I asked you, would you take a polygraph? Yeah. You would? Yeah. Are you lying to me? No. You're not lying <laughs> to me about anything? No, I'm not lying to you. That's why I said I'll take a polygraph. If I wanted a DNA sample, I could get it from you? Right now. Right now? Right now. Okay. Wait right there. You know how you get DNA, right? Swab. <laughs> well, I said, everybody we talked to, we asked for a swap, so.
So what else have you heard? Anything at all? No. Nothing? No. Does it, he did owe people money, though. And I'm like not the only person, though. Because... <clears throat> so when did your right? When you got these tickets in November, was that in Johnny's car? Oh. License plates, that driving was without seatbelts. I got stopped um, as a passenger, mm -hmm. and then we're already. Oh. What? Uh, oh. Speeding through Oregon. That's old. Mm -hmm. Oh, like, well, you still owe them 104 bucks. Yeah, I know. I had a traffic, or money only went through Oregon. And then. Who was driving Johnny's car when it, the wheel came off? Thanks, Phil. I, just, I know it was the license plate, I don't know. I'm sorry, this is just. I don't know. Right. I smoke gladly. I don't even. It's so hard for me to remember certain stuff, like, I don't. I Can I see your tattoos? Yeah, tattoos. What's that say? A guy that I trust. I'll pay cash. Um. <laughs> oh, there you go. I only know a few people with their license. Have you talked to the Watson brothers since this happened? Yeah. What have they had to say? I don't talk to him about the situation. So I don't like, I won't talk to, the only person I've talked to about the situation to is Zach. Because like, you know. Does Zach seem nervous about anything? No. You think Zach he talks about The only thing Zach tells me about this is he said the police are looking at the wrong people. They're looking at his friends. They're looking at the people who really cared about Johnny. Well, what does Zach think we ought to look at? No, I'm, I don't know if, what he, if he thinks like there's anybody in particular that you should look at or anything. Do you think that Zach knows who did this? I I'm not saying that know. Zach was involved. Honestly, Do you I think Zach no, knows more than... Honestly, I have no idea. He won't. He don't let on to me anything because he knows that I tell him, like, you need to do what you need to do to get yourself out of this situation and let it be done and over with. Because this, I mean, it can't, this can't go on forever like this. It's, well, not right. it's not fair, though, to Johnny and Lisa, or right. her, his family. If, and regardless if, of the problems that I did have with them, like, $750 isn't anything compared to what Johnny's life is and his mom. And, you know, Johnny will never be able to have kids now. And, like, I think about that kind of stuff, you know. Like, his mom, that's their oldest son. Did you ever hear anything about Lisa that might bring somebody to that house? Do you, did you I ever hear that? I she used to, like, do powder and stuff, like, snort coke. So, like, I don't know, like, I know she was on, on it. Every time like Johnny and her broke up, she like do it a lot. From what I've heard. Mm -hmm. But she was still working and stuff. Yeah, she waitress somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well. I've talked to a lot of people, and I'm just trying to gather information about this. You know, that's why I wanted to talk to you. I mean, it'd have been a lot easier if you just come in and talk to me I know. before. I told you I wouldn't be in a restaurant. I know. I mean, it'd been very simple. Where where they arrest you? At? In my house. Casino slides around the question of whether or not Burkett knows anything by saying he hasn't let on to her that he has, which means she thinks it's possible he knows something. So far it's more likely that he's playing armchair quarterback. Where are you staying? I'm so. All right, they're coming. Now you got to pee and I'm going to give you a walk. I know, but I was right? just thinking about that too. Is that okay? Yeah, it's fine. Thank you. So, well, you know, if you do know something, I would tell you, sir, because most of it, like, I don't, like, this, like, whole, you know, waking me up out of the sleep thing and all that. Like, I don't want this in my life. Like, I don't need it, especially now that, you know, since I had caught that case in February, and I was lucky enough that they didn't charge me the felony. Like, I want to get my life together. Like, 
Well, there's a lot of stuff that... I want to go to school. This, this, I can't go to school anymore. Right. If I'm but this something. case, this case... This is serious. Is there's a lot of things, if somebody was very was forthcoming with information... It would put your pieces together. And you right, know. but there's a lot that, some, that somebody like I or Detective Lewandowski or somebody like that could do for that person. Not just, you know, if they get hemmed up on something something and they need help and there's a substantial cash yeah, I know reward that. out there. I mean substantial. Yeah. That could set somebody up that wanted to go to school or was looking to move and get someplace. But if they knew something. The detective isn't being very subtle. He's almost flat out saying that she'll benefit if she gives him information. It's doubtful if they would follow through with that, but anything goes when it comes to getting a confession or lead. You know, and they're afraid if they're, that person's afraid. Yeah, there's... You know, there's ways to help with that too, so. All right, there's, I think there's a female coming and they'll uh, catch down real quick. How long did you have that pickup truck? How long had you had that pickup truck before the night that you and Deshaun were like? When did what? you pick it up? You had it for a month. Maybe. So was it basically yours? Did he give it to you? He let me use it because he knew I had a car. What was he driving? He's a man. My grandma was um, crippled, sir. So like he, um, she's in a wheelchair, so he had like a van with a lift and stuff in it for her. All right, so did you start using it before, like when the wheel fell off? No, it was after that. Beginning of January? Maybe, probably then. I don't, honestly, I don't. You went out there and got it from him? Your grandpa let you come out and get it and you can use it? Yeah. So you didn't go out and get it the night no, no, that you no. and Deshaun were it driving wasn't around at my grandpa's house. No, no, I didn't go out there and get it. No, because he lives out in Holland. Like, I'm not going to drive him out there. The truck was at my mom's house when I when I did receive the truck. And your mom lives on Corduroy? Yeah. Okay. So you, you got the truck on Corduroy. Yeah. You didn't go out to your grandpa's no, house that, that night. Okay, do you have any idea what it is we want to talk to you about? Sam Williams. Okay. I got kind of figured it out when my grandmother called me. She's like, "Please start." First, I thought it was the incident that happened last night at the bar because I did talk to the cops about the incident at the bar last night. But then she's like, "It's about Sam," and I'm like, "Okay, right away, got up, got dressed." Listen, we're down to a very serious juncture in this case. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, it's incumbent upon you to tell us everything right. you know. Uh, cooperate with us fully. Uh, otherwise, and this is not a threat, we're just letting you know this exists, the chances exist, you could be charged, all right? Right. And I don't think you want that, and I don't think we want that for you. I think we'd rather have you tell us everything you know. Right. Okay, so. Right away, Madrid knows this is about Sam Williams and his possible involvement. During the time period around the murder, Williams was cheating on his girlfriend with Madrid. Any information Madrid has may be inaccurate because his behavior shows that he's willing to lie. So there's every reason to believe he has lied to Madrid as well. Tell the detective everything you know here at this point. Well, tell me, how long have you known Sam? Well, I okay. I know, I know Sam. I didn't start knowing him until December of 2010. I know... You met him then? That's when I first started. Well, I met him back in October through on Facebook. We started talking on Facebook. And um, I've known him because I used to date DJ Hummer, which was one of his good friends that was friends with his ex-wife. and. I know I, I seen him around. Okay. Never really hung out with him. Never really talked to him until October of 2010. Started talking to him on Facebook. 
never like met him in person or nothing. We just, you know, chatted over online. That's it. In December of 2010, Johnny J's house got raided, which was on Morrison, where he was at. He was hanging out there. Where Sam was at? Where Sam was at. Who's no, Johnny J? Johnny J. Willett. He, his house got raided. There was, I think three, it was Sam and three other guys that was there, plus Johnny. The house, Do you know any other names? Uh, no, I just know Johnny J and Sam. Okay, go ahead. Johnny J took the full blame for Sam and the three other guys. Sam got out, I guess they, you know, they brought him down here, talked to him, whatever, see what, you know, like you guys are doing with me, talk mm -hmm. to him. He called me that night. And like, like I said, I, I talked to him. Sometimes I would talk to him on the phone. But he called me that night and I was on my way back from Detroit. And, Cause my grandpa's, you know, he's, he was in the army. So he had like this army get together, whatever, in Detroit. So I'm on my way back, it was storming with snow and everything. I'm in the car talking to him and he's like, I wanna see you. Who said I wanna see you? Okay. Sam was like, you know, I need, I need Talking somebody. to you on your cell phone. Talking to me on my cell phone, he's like. What cell phone did you have at the time? What number? <sighs> And you know what? I've been through so many phones. It was through Page Plus. I don't remember the number. You'd know it if you heard it? I, I, I would know it if I heard it, okay. yes. Okay, all right. Well, that's something we might check here shortly. Okay. I mean, I could find it out and let you guys know. I think it's a 419-726, maybe. I'm not sure. I can I could possibly ask my grandma because she keeps all the like, our records of my numbers at 716, you think so? 726. 726. 419 726. This would have been last December that yes. he called you. Yes. Right? And let me see. 726 8974, maybe? Possibly. Possibly. Okay. I, I want to say I'm not. I'll put a question mark. I'm not there. quite sure on that. Okay. One. All right. But he called me. I'm on the phone with him. My phone was like getting really bad reception. <clears throat> so I'm like, look, I'll call you when I get home. I'm not that far away. It's storming. It's snowing. We're stuck on the expressway because there's this big old cloud of snow coming, and everybody just completely stopped because you know there was just no way. A semi almost slow. And we were just moving slow. A semi almost went off the road. So I'm like, look, I'll call you when I get home. And he's like, no, I really need to talk to you. And I'm like, what's going on? He's like, Johnny J's house just got raided. I just got, you know, they just talked to me. I need, I need to sit down and I need, to, I need somebody to talk to. He's like, and I really think I could talk to you personally because, you know, he's like, I've known you for so many years, but I don't, he's like, I think I can trust you. So I'm like, what, okay. What was it rated for? I think they, I think they rated him for drugs. Okay. It was, they, they found so many drugs in his house and with so many money, with so much money or whatever. I, he, he only told me so much of the details. Okay. He didn't tell me everything. He just said, I, you know, I need to talk to you. I'm like, okay, you know, whatever. All right. I get home, he picks me up. I call all right, him. All right. What number did he call you from? Do you remember? Um, 419 917. Hold on. 917. 7021. 7021. <laughs> yeah, I had to look at the phone. So he called like, you from that number? Yeah, that was his old cell phone number. I don't know his current one right now because he was calling me. I just got, just started talking to him again because me and him, I got into a big old fight. I stopped talking to him. Okay. All and right. I don't know his new number. So this will be the first time you've actually met him when he comes over. Right. Well, I met him before, but me and him by ourselves. Okay. So this is in December. Right. You just got home from wherever. I okay. want to say it was December 3rd or 4th. I could find out from my grandma because... Oh, that's all right. I mean, it was, that was the same date that was, the party was. So I can find out the date. But I want to say it was either December 3rd or December 4th. Madrid is the type of interview investigators love. She overshares, going into detail when she should, if she chooses to speak without representation, only be answering questions with a minimum amount of words. So he comes over. Right. I called when I got home. I said, look, I'm home now. You know, let me change out of my dress clothes. Give me about five, 10 minutes or whatever. If you, if wherever you're at, you can leave now. And, you know, you know where I live, pull up in front. Be torn one or twice, and you know I'll come up. He comes, he calls me. He's like, I'm outside. I didn't want to be because it was like almost 11 o'clock at night. He's like, I don't know if your grandparents are sleeping or not. And he's like, no, I didn't want to, you know, wake them up. So I'm like, okay, respect it. So I told him, I said, well, give me a minute. I'm put my shoes on. I'll be outside. Get outside. Get in the car. And we go to his sister's house. 
which was right there in Idaho. She don't live there no more. I don't know where she lives now. But we went there and we talked. And he's like, I don't know what to do. You know, and he's like, I don't know if I should testify, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, look, do what you have to do. You know, that's your own choice if you decide to say whatever you wanted to say. And he's like, all right. That, at that point, you know, we didn't do nothing else. We stayed at the house. We watched movies, whatever, talked to his sister. And that was it. That was the night. Went home the next day, whatever. I basically, me and him, we actually got together on December 13th. Like, was actually a couple at that time. He tells me, he had, he, he's like, look, I have a baby mama. She's due in February with my second kid. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, well, you know, does she know about me? You know, I just, I don't want to see her. I don't, you know, I don't want us to be together. And she mm -hmm. sees us and then it starts a big old thing. I said, you know, does she know me? And she's, he's like, well, I told her about you. I told her that we were together. She's fine with it. And I'm like, okay. Like, and I never had no problem with her the whole time we was the other. Did not have no problem with her. And that was a very shocker to me. Very understanding woman. Right. And I'm like, and he was like, well, she don't want to go on her, be under no stress because they could put her in early labor. And I'm like, okay. Which I understand. So I never talked to her. I've, we seen, I've seen her, but no altercation, no problem, nothing. Williams gives one of the standard lines used by cheaters, and Madrid falls for it. He's playing both sides against the middle and has no doubt come up with an equally improbable lie to tell his girlfriend. Okay. And then he finally, it was like when, let me see, I want to say that beginning of May or middle of May, he goes to Stryker for 30 days, was writing me. I have the letters at my house from him. And she comes and she's like, look, I need the letters from him. He said that he's been talking to you and he's been writing you. I need letters. I'm like, okay, whatever. I gave her a copy of the letters. I said, look, I'm not going to give you the originals just because I don't know if it's true or not. I'll give you a copy of them. That's not a problem with me. I will give you a copy. Gave her a copy. He calls me three-way. And I'm like, look, did you tell Starla that, you know, that you've been writing me? He's like, no. I'm like, well, she came to my house. Not in, like, a disrespectful way, not getting all mad or anything. I'm like, but she called me. And she came to my house. I said, you know, is she lying or are you lying? He was like, she did it on her own. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I let it be after that. Let it go. I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to stay here. I'm not going to argue with you. Okay. She just had her baby. I'm not going to argue with you. I let it go. He gets out of jail. We started arguing because of that whole situation. I did not talk to him at all. I told him, I said, look, I don't want nothing to do with you. Leave me alone. Be with her. You guys have a kid together. Be with her. Leave me alone. I don't want to be in that picture. I'm like, you know, you didn't even, when we first got together, you didn't even tell me that you had a baby mama. I knew your baby, your first baby mama because I used to hang out with her. I'm like, but you did not tell me about Star. So I'm like, you know what? Leave me alone. Don't call me no more. Don't text me. Don't come by my house. You know, just leave me alone. He left me alone. Recently, and that was back in June. I didn't talk to him for July or August, but in September, towards then, I just started recently talking to him. And Once he was arrested? After he was arrested. Well, no, before he got arrested. I was talking to him because he, he got out. He went to jail in May. I want to say it was either beginning or the middle. I'm not sure, but he got 30 days in striker. He got out in June. I didn't talk to him July, August. A little bit of September, but towards the end of September, before they arrested him, which I want to say was like three weeks ago, maybe, I started talking to him. I seen him. He came over to my ex-boyfriend's cousin's house. We were all staying outside, talking, you know, just catching up. And me and him was talking about getting back together, but I was like, you know what? I want to take it slow because I don't want to deal with the drama with you and your baby mama or whatever. So, you know... We'll just take his soul at first. And then I get the call, and they're like, Sam went to jail for murder. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, what do you mean? And they're like, he went to jail. I'm like, shut up. You're, you're playing with me. You know, don't play with me. They're like, no, Dustin, we're being serious. And I'm like, 
Shut up. So I didn't believe it at first. So me personally, I called down a booking. I was like, do you have a Samuel Todd Williams? And they're like, what's the birthday? I said, 823.87. They're like, yeah, we have him. And I'm like, can I know his charges? And they're like, two counts of burglary and two counts of murder charges. And I'm like, are you serious? And we hung up. And I called my ex-boyfriend's cousin, Angelica, called her. I said, when did they arrest him? They were like, she was like, today at 6 o'clock, they picked him up on a warrant and this. And I'm like, you know, okay. So I'm like, I'm like, well, who was it? You know, who are the two people that he's getting charged with this for? She's like, Johnny Clark and Lisa Straub. And I'm like, that was back in January. I'm like, he was with me that night. And I want to say, I'm not quite sure, but I want to say that we had went to the Bedford Hotel that night. But I'm not sure. I haven't went to the hotel. I don't know if I can go to the hotel and get the like records unless I have a warrant. I'm not sure if I can like go in there and be like, look, you know, can I get the record of me? Because the hotels were in my name in Bedford. They were in my name. So I don't know if I can like go down there and ask them, like, you know, can you at least give me the dates or whatever. But I know that night on January 31st, we were at the bottom line watching the football games with his cousin, Larry Gahouse, and it was his cousin's 21st birthday. Me, Larry, and Sam left, went to go pick up Larry's car, and we went back, me and Sam went back to his sister's. He had to pick a couple, pick up a pair of clothes. And I want to say it was that same night we went back to the hotel, but I'm not sure if that was the night or if it was the next night. But I know one of the nights we were at the hotel because him and his sister had got into it. But I, I want to say I'm not quite sure if it's that night or the night after. I'm not sure. Where's the Bedford? Um, on Telegraph, right? You go down Telegraph, it's Alexis. It's like the state line. And it's on the right hand side. It's on the right hand. What's it look like? It looks like a, I don't know. It's, it's not, it's like a one level hotel. Do you remember the color or anything? It's brown. It's Bedford, uh, Bedford Inn Suites. Madrid is very open and a little bit shocked by the situation. She reads like someone that has been brought into a situation without her knowledge. It hasn't hit her yet, but the most likely scenario is that Williams was trying to use her as an alibi. Do you remember the dust clerk? Um, I think she was an Arabic, maybe? I think it was an Arab lady? Yeah, I'm okay. not sure. Do you recall how you paid for it? Cash. Did you have to show an ID? Yeah. How many times have you been to the bed for? Twice. Who with? Sam. What's so important about these letters? Nothing, just, we were just talking. And he, the first letter I got from him was stating that he didn't know if it was like my real address. So he basically said, if I get the letter, write him back, which I did. Cause he, he had somebody drive past, drive past my house, get my address. And cause he didn't know my address personally, like by heart. He was like, look, I don't know if this is your address. If it is, write me back and let me know whatever, so I wrote him back. He wrote me back twice. So, I mean, it, it's really like... Well, why did she want a copy of those? Because she didn't like the fact that I was writing him while he was in jail. She told, he told me that they were not together at that time, but she told me that they were. So when he got out of jail, I told him, I said, look, I don't know who's lying. I don't know if to believe you or to believe her. I said, but you know what? I don't want to deal with it. I don't want the drama. Let me, let me be. Do you still have those letters? Yes. Okay. I still have them there at home. Do you know Cam? I went to high school with him. Okay. What can you tell us about Cam? Not a good dude. I, personally, he's not a good dude. I know his sister and all that, but I don't know Sam like that, or cameo like that. Like, I just know he went to high school, I went to high school with him. He's mainly all about the trouble. Cam and Sam are 
good friends. Yeah. Kind of since childhood, right? I think so, yeah. Have you ever been with Sam when Camille's been along? No. Never? Never. Nope. Not once at all. Do you drive? I do, but I don't have a car. I have a license, but I don't drive. I don't have a car personally. Whose car do you use when you need a car? Oh, my grandmother's. Okay, what's she have? Uh, two, I want to say 2004, a Lero, silver. Silver? Yeah. Is that the one but, that's parked on the side? Yeah, she, but when I need to use it, she drives with me. Or she'll drive or I'll drive. She can't see really good at night, so when it comes like nighttime, I drive when she needs me. But during the day, she's fine. She can drive during the day, but it's just towards the night comes, she can't drive. <clears throat> Why, when um, somebody you were told that what what murders, mm -hmm. and they said Johnny Clark and Lisa Straub, right away you knew what they were talking about. Yeah, I because I I like like I said I've seen it on the news. And you Back in January, the exact day? I, I remembered it because she's like it's January thirty first, and I'm like, he was with me because it was. That was, I want to say, six days after my 21st birthday. And he wasn't with me on my birthday. But he was like, because I, I don't know if he, he said he was out of town. I don't know where he was. Because I didn't talk to him for like four days. Knowing the exact date isn't really suspicious. Because when something like that happens to someone in your social circle, even if you aren't all that close, it tends to make an impression. At a time. I did not talk to him. We were fighting. Did not talk to him whatsoever. Finally, he's like, look, I'm sorry for the argument we had, whatever. Can we meet up? We met up, took me out, went to the bar, had a couple drinks. Went to his, his sister's house. Like I said, I want to say it's that same night that we went back to the Bedford Hotel, but I'm not sure if it's that night or the night after. All right, what if I clear it up for you? What if I tell you that you're not on the video at the bottom line on that night? What do you mean? The bottom line has video. Right. So you or Sam are not on that video that night inside the bottom line. Or whatever bar that was. Was it the bottom line? Yeah. yeah. We were sitting right by the front door. Like oh, that okay. table by the front door, it was like right. right there. There was four seats. And I don't know who the other guy that was with us, but I know it was me, Sam, and Larry. And then there was another person, but I don't know what his name was. But we were sitting, like, here's the door and the table, like, right there. We were sitting right there. Like, what was on TV that night? The NFC football game. The NFC. Oh, the championship game? Yeah. Yep. It was, I want to say it was a Sunday. To be honest, I want to say it was a Sunday that we were there. Because Sundays they normally have karaoke, but I think the karaoke was not there that night. So it was either a Sunday or it might have been... Tuesday, but I'm pretty sure it was the Sunday because the NFC football game, the championship game, was on that night. Okay. Did uh, has Sam ever come over and asked you to drive his car? A couple times. Not a whole lot though. I've drove his car maybe twice at the most. And what instances were those? Just like. Going to like Rasford to pick up somebody because he said he didn't have a license, and I do, so he didn't want to drive out to Rasford, so we went out to Rasford, picked up his cousin, dropped them off, and he would drive once we get back to the east side. You get off the east side much? Kind of, sort of. My mom's house is like more like the getaway house. Like if I want to just like get off the east side for a little bit and just, you know, leave all the drama behind, I go out to my mom's, on, which is on the west end on Alexis. It's like. 15 minutes, not even 15 minutes away from my grandmother's. Like, that's where I go out. I just spend the weekend out there or a couple days out there and I just relax. And, you know, if I'm like feeling stressed out, that's where I go. Like, my mom's house is the getaway. Like, m nobody knows where my mom lives. Nobody. Okay. Sam, Sam's been to my house, my mom's house. My mom wasn't there. My dad was. My stepdad, not my real dad, my stepdad. He met my stepdad. He only he was he only been out there one time, and that was it. 
but he's the only one that knows where my mom lives and he knows where my grandma lives. Never took him anywhere else, none of my other family, none of that, because, you know, like, I didn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't feel comfortable bringing him around my family just yet, so I basically kept him from my family like a secret. Like, the only ones that knew about him was my grandma and my dad. Okay. It was the only two that knew about him. Have you talked to Starla lately? No, and she, my grandma t my grandma told me on September twenty sixth or twenty seventh, Star came to my house, mm -hmm. and she gave me a description. A description. I know what Star looks like. Star, she's tall, white girl, blonde hair, wears glasses. She's kind of heavy. My grandma gave me another description. She told me that it was a girl about my height, skinny, black hair, no gla wears glasses, and I'm like, that's not Star. So, I honestly, I don't know who she brought to my house, but my grandma did say that they came in a gold car, kind of like hers, but a little bit smaller. She said there was a white girl driving with a bunch of kids in the back. What'd they want? She wanted, the girl that came knocking on my door wanted to talk to me about this whole situation, and I'm like, she, my grandma called me after the girl, the girl left. And I'm like, look, I don't know who that is, Next time they come to the house, just call the cops because I don't know who that is. I know that's not Star. You know, Star's tall. She's a white girl. She has blonde hair. She wears glasses, and she's kind of heavy. I'm like, but the description that you're giving me, I don't know who that is personally. So if they're coming to my house asking me, asking you about me, and I don't know who that is, if they come again, call the cops because I don't know who that but is. Do you know what they wanted? They wanted. She wanted to talk to me about Sam going to jail and why would that she wanted to know where I was at what hotel I was at with him and you know that night and what did we do and all that because she said she's like my son or my son my boyfriend is on trial for the death penalty because of this and I need to know where they was at because we need to tell his lawyer to get him out of this and my grandma was like I don't know what you're talking about I don't know who you are okay. you know so they were there looking for the alibi. Right. For Sam. Right. And you provided one. I didn't know why I did. I was not home at that time. Okay. Was not home. My grandma called me after she left. Okay. I was at, I had stayed the night at Brandon's house. And like I said, I want to say it was September 26th or 27th. It was on a Tuesday. Okay. So, and I'm like, I don't know who that is. And I guess the lady asked for my number. She asked for my first name and my last name. My grandma's like, there's a lot of destinies out here, and I'm not going to give you my gra my granddaughter's last name. You know what I'm saying? Because you, you, cause she, my grandma asked the girl, a lady, she said, you're looking for destiny who? She's like, well, I don't know her last name. Starla knows my first and my last name. Starla knows what I look like, my first and last name. And she, my grandma told me that the, the lady did not know my last name. And I'm like, right away, that's not Star. Star knows my last name. Star knows my first name. And Star would not come to my house. She would she would end up calling me. And then the lady told her, like, I need to talk to Destiny. She knows where I live and she knows my number. I don't know Starla's number. I just know that Sam lives on Kelsey. But Sam told me that Star does not live with him. The detective is being misleading. It's true that Madrid and Williams weren't on the security footage but that is because there was no security footage from that night. Most places like that have security cameras and innocent people like Madrid naturally assume that they will show up and she expects that to prove William's innocence. When's the last time you talked to, stay, uh, to Sam from the jail? I have not talked to him from the jail. He has talked to you through other people? He told my ex boy my ex boyfriend's cousin for me to write him and I didn't. I wrote him twice because I'm like, look, I need to know what's going on because, you know, everybody's talking about that I'm gonna have to testify against you. I'm confused about everything. I'm like, but I'm putting stuff together little by little, like I'm remembering stuff and I'm putting it all together. And I'm like, I need to know what's going on. I'm like Star came to my house. You know. Okay. I need to know. Like, you need to tell me what's going on. Have like, you ever been out by Springfield Mall? You know, or, or that Spring Meadows Mall area? You ever been out there? 
Where's that at? You go out Airport Highway? I've been out there with him once. You were out there with him? Yes. Where at? At some hotel. I. It's by Sam's Club. Behind... It's Burger King, and I think there's Chili's, the restaurant Chili's. That whole, there's yes. a bunch of hotels yes. behind there. Behind I, Bob Evans. Right. I I don't know which hotel I could tell you. I can show you, but I don't remember. You remember what day that was? His son's birthday, and I want to say it's January fifth. Fifth. Yeah. We had stayed out there one night, and that hotel was in his name. I don't know how if you, if you pay by every credit card, debit card, cash, don't know, but I know that was in his name. It's getting a little difficult to keep up with all of William's women. So far, we have Star, the one having his child, an unnamed girlfriend, and Madrid, who he is cheating on the others with. Whatever his involvement in these murders, he isn't coming across as a sympathetic character or an honest one. Gain, what, you're not gaining enough? Yeah, I'm not really? gaining enough weight. Are you eating? Yeah, but I think I'm huge. Oh, too. Oh, yeah, you're just <laughs> huge. You're tough. Yeah. yeah. Do you know Detective Williams? You do. He took your DNA, yeah, he took know. your prints. Yes. Did all that crap. All right. Now, when we first talked the first couple times, there's some things that you omitted, right? I admitted. Omitted that you left out. Oh, what, am I being driving to go pick up the money? Well, stuff like that. Or are you talking about when I was with the FBI guy and the emotions and feelings? Are you talking about that? Because he told no. me I never said nothing about none of that. And what, your emotions? No, Zach's. See, I don't know what you guys talked about in the in the oh polygraph. Oh my god, it was horrible. Well, I told. You. It was horrible. <laughs> See, I don't know what he talked about with Zach either. Uh -huh. But I know Zach said some things to you that really didn't happen there. Am I right? Did Zach tell you some things that happened in his polygraph that didn't actually happen? Yeah. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Do you know how Zach did on his polygraph? Um, I guess horribly. His mom called me crying. Said he failed all the tests or failed them all or failed most of them or... Mm -hmm. I don't know. What I want to do real quick is go over again. Tiffany, I have to get you... I have to... I have told you before that... You keep saying you had nothing to do with it, but every step along the way, you know, and I want to believe you, mm -hmm. and I think I do, but every time we talk or whenever so something else, you may think is very small and doesn't mean, but it does. This shows the importance of speaking with an attorney present. The detective doesn't really seem to suspect her, but he can't ignore inconsistencies and omissions. From the way she speaks, she seems like the sort of person whose mind goes off on rabbit trails and doesn't focus on or remember a lot of details unless they're pointed out to her. It means you're not being totally honest about everything. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know why you didn't tell me you went, whose house did you go to that day to get the $100? Um, I went over and met my friend Vic. He had a friend. What's that, Vic's last name? I have no idea. I honestly do not know his last name. All right, so. I met him when I worked at Maryland's. Maryland's on Monroe. What's that? It's a strip club right downtown. You were a stripper? No, I used to be a waitress. I have danced before, but not as like an everyday 
Just once in a while, I'll take them. Mm -mm. Okay. All right. So, that night, let's go back to that night. You were at AP's house. Mm -hmm. I remember that. You're at AP's house. Who came and picked you up? Drew Warren. Okay, Drew Warren came and got you. About what time? Mm, between maybe four and six. Okay. Where'd you go? To Zach's house. Okay. Who was home at Zach's house? His grandma and his mom. And Zach wasn't there. So you got Zach? Zach wasn't there. Mm -mm. Okay. He was meeting me there. Can I just put Granny and Mom? Mm-hmm. Granny and Renee. However you spell it. That's how. Where was Zach? I don't know. He didn't tell me where Zach. All he said was he was with his friend and he'd meet me at the house. Do you know what his friend's name was? No, he didn't tell me who he was with. Okay. Um, so you get there... Where'd you go then? Um, I went, we went to Zach's. I waited for Zach to get there. And I'm not sure. I know we stayed there for a minute, but I think we might have left and went and got pills. I'm thinking that we left and went and got pills. I'm pretty not sure. I like, I'm not sure though. What time? It was early, maybe an hour after I got to Zach's. So house. seven o'clock? Seven, I'm guessing. Right. Where'd you go? Um, like I said, I, oh my goodness, I do not remember where we went. Got. Was it somebody's house? Yeah, somebody's house, yeah. Somebody you regularly buy from? See, Zach always got the pills, so I would just always just drive him where he had to go. Did you go in or did Zach go Zach. in? Zach. <clears throat> All right, then where'd you go? Back to Zach's house. All right, then where? Then I stayed at Zach's house. We stayed at Zach's house, and um, see, I so know did you we went and picked pill? up pills. Did you do the pill right away? Yeah, you know we picked up. I remember talking to Johnny and being on the east side grabbing pills. All right, yeah, I don't. So, that's know, all right. I mean, I just want to know to Zach's and we where your Zach's. body was. Zach's. Okay, you're at Zach's house. So you left about nine, seven o'clock to go get pills. How long did it take you? Um, but you were on the east side. Getting I remember being on the east side, yeah, and talking on the phone. How many that. pills? Uh, probably two. How much did you spend? Um, forty dollars. Okay, where'd you get that money? Zach got it from his mom. And Renee knew where you were going. Um, I'm sure she was no dummy. Well, Zach would just be like. Hey, Mike, can we use your car real quick? We're going somewhere. But she wasn't so Mom's bad. car. How long did you have to wait for Zach to um, get to the house when you were there with Renee and 20 Ray? minutes. 20 minutes to a half hour. You know, I lived there, so it really didn't bother me to be there by myself. So I was used to him never being Did she want you house. to get her some pills or anything? Uh-uh. No, she don't do pills. So I just waited. She's got a script for something that she takes. Xanax. Oh, that's right. She gets right. Xanax. That's right. She's on Xanax. I mean, the woman sleeps 18 hours a day. She's got to be on something. Right? Oh, yeah. She does All right. sleep a lot. So you're at Zach's house then. You got your pills. You took your pill. <clears throat> Do you space out or something for a while, or are you just mellowed? Just mellowed. All right. You're mellowed out. You're at Zach's house. <clears throat> what are you guys doing? Um, I'm upstairs. I always... I'm up in Zach's room, and Zach's always, like, in and out. I'm upstairs watching TV in his room. Did Zach leave again, or did Zach talk to anybody on the phone? Zach always is on his I phone. I know, he's always on his always phone. Always on his phone. And like I said, he's always in and out. You know what I mean? Not like, pers he wasn't, like, persistent, gone, as in, like, okay, an hour went by, where's Zach? You know what I mean? He's in... Come upstairs, run upstairs, you know what I mean? Sit down for a minute, get on his phone. I'll be right back. He'll run wherever he went, be gone for 10, 15 minutes, come back in. 
Does be this all have to do with drugs and pills or yeah. stuff? Okay. Mm -hmm. Tiffany isn't going to be very helpful to the investigation. She's scattered, and depending on what drugs she was taking, her perception of events may not be reliable, even if she truly believes it herself. All right, so you're at Zach's house. You stay at Zach's house until when? Um, we spoke with Johnny and Lisa, and then... Let's talk about talking to Johnny and Lisa. Was there supposed to be a party? No, no party. There wasn't supposed to be a party. No, they was... didn't invite anybody else over. No, it was a last minute, hey, do you guys want to come over and play pool? Okay. A last minute thing. Nobody knew we was going out and there. And what time, what, do you remember about what time you guys were... Was this on the phone? Yeah. All right. Or oh. texting? No, it was on the. We were on the phone. But you're texting too <laughs> at the same time. No. This, I mean, if you're I, not a, okay. No, I had texted Lisa while she was at work, because we had talked to Johnny and Johnny said they were going to get pills when Lisa got off work, and I was like, "Can you find a, uh, meet one and I'll give you the money back tomorrow?" <clears throat> he said he had asked Lisa, so I text Lisa's phone. That's where the texting came in. Okay. Then by the time Lisa got off work, which was at, I'm guessing, 10 o'clock, Lisa had texted me back and was like, you know, I thought you was a friend. And then that's when I called Lisa, like, no, 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 you took that in the wrong way. It wasn't nothing like that. Then um, that's when we was on the phone talking, and it was approximately 10.30-ish when we hung up, 10.40-ish. That's why I was saying 11 o'clock is, you know, when I heard all that. Okay. That's All why right. I was guessing, because I know it was about 10.30 around the time that we had hung up our phone. All right. All right. So you left, you went to the east side, you got pills. Mm -hmm. You're at Zach's house. Mm -hmm. You're back. You've taken your pills. You only had one, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. When do you leave again with Renee's car? Do you go, does, is the next time you leave the house, is it when you go to see Vic? Yeah. All right, what time was that? Um, it was after I heard Johnny on his phone. After I spoke with Johnny, after we all went and got cigarettes. And we walked to the store and got cigarettes. All right. And me and Zach got into an argument because um, I wanted to drive out there and he was like, well, just wait, they'll be here. All right, so let's, all right then. So Tiffany and Zach, you and Zach, you guys walk to the carryout to get cigarettes. That's when you leave the house the next time. Yeah. What carryout did you go to? Oh, my goodness. I know one of them little carryouts right there by his house. Well, Tiffany, if you walk out of Zach's door and turn to the right, you're just going to walk down I know, that but I'm pretty sure that store was closed. Okay, so then where'd you go? There's a store right across the street. So I'm thinking that's the store we want to. Was the one across the street from his? There, there's one that in that plaza. plaza. You yeah. went to that one then? I'm pretty sure that's the store we went to because the store next to his house is closed. So you're saying, let's say, here's airport, here's Westwood, here's that store. It's well, in the plaza of the bar. So the bar, there's a bar here though on the corner. Yeah, and it's on the opposite then, corner of the. Then there's room. a plaza. recovery room. Yeah, there's it's in the plaza of the recovery room, right. and then right next to the other store, the other side of the store is Bills. All right, so that's where you went. You went to that store. Mm -hmm. All right, and you went in there and you bought. Pack cigarettes. You bought a whole pack. Yeah. Not just one. No. Cigarette. No. We had a pack because I remember leaving the pack with Zach, and I had to stop at my niece's before I went to Vicks. All right. So, you leave the house, you walk to the carryout, you buy a pack of cigarettes. Mm -hmm. When did you call Johnny? Where in here did you call Johnny and you heard what you Right heard? here, before we went to the store. All right. So no, as we, went to, as we was going to the store. So, right as before we so walked to the store. You call I Johnny. called, yes. On your phone? On my phone, yes. I want to go over that conversation again in okay. detail. that's fine. All right. You call Johnny on the phone. Mm -hmm. How many times did it ring, you think? You um, remember? Once or twice. Okay, he one to two right rings. Up. Picked it right up. Mm -hmm. You know it was Johnny? Yes. 
How long of a pause before he said anything? He didn't say hello. All right, so he never said anything. Never said hello. So, all right, so you're on the phone. Mm -hmm. How long before you hear anything on the phone? Did you, what did you? Like, as soon as he picked it up, he didn't say hello to me, but he was like, bro, what are you doing? All right, I want to get this down again, bro. To get a tighter timeline, they'll be checking the surrounding surveillance footage of the store Tiffany claims they visited as well as trying to match the times of the calls with her statement. The way Clark answered his phone almost suggests he didn't look at who was calling and may have thought he was talking to someone else. What are you doing, okay? Okay, and he said that approximately three times. Okay. Then the All right, let him give me his voice. Was it, bro, what are you doing? Or, bro, what are you doing? Yeah, just like that. Was, he bro, sounded yeah. pissed? Yeah. Did he sound scared? No. Not he just scared. sounded pissed? Just pissed, yeah. All right, so you hear, you hear, bro, what are you doing three times? Johnny sounds pissed. Mm -hmm. All right, then what he said? Then the next thing he said was, who the hell are you? How many times? Um, Once. And then that's when I heard the other person in the background, but I couldn't hear what he was saying. So you overheard a voice in the background. A guy voice. You're sure it was a guy? I'm positive it was a guy. Have you ever heard it before? No. Well, I really couldn't tell, you know what I mean, right. but. Okay. All right, so then what? Then he had Asked again, bro, what are you doing? After he said, who are After you? the three times he said it yeah, here, he said, he said it again. Yeah, and that's when this guy was talking, so that's why I couldn't hear him, is because Johnny was saying, um, bro, what are you doing once again? All right. Did you hear anything in the background, like a door close, footsteps? It sounded like Johnny was, did he sound pissed here again? Mm -hmm. Did he sound pissed here? Yeah. Did he sound like he was out of breath? No. Did he sound like he was scared or nervous? No. Did he sound like he knew them people? Mm -hmm. That's why I said I think that whoever did it, he knew because, you know, if you knew Johnny... How did he, that, how did he end the conversation with you? Tip, I'm going to call you back and hung okay. up. Okay, now... Not, he now, didn't give me a chance what, to talk or anything. That, Okay, he just hangs out, he says he'll call you back. Mm -hmm. Okay, which means he probably knows who's in the house. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you call who? I didn't call and nobody. Who did you call to tell him that conversation with Johnny? Nobody, I just told Zach. Okay, how did Johnny's mom find out about the phone conversation? Um, after I had drove out to their house, and there was no response. I drove back. To Lisa's house. When after I left Lisa's house, I drove back. And I was like, well, maybe they're just ignoring us. We'll just drive around, look for them. And I called my friend Sharita to get Ruben's number, which is Johnny's best friend, so that I could get in contact. <clears throat> well, see if Johnny could answer, if he would answer the phone to Ruben. And then if Ruben didn't get an answer, then we can get a hold of the family and let the family know. Because I just why? thought maybe he was ignoring me. <clears throat> why would you? Because I think. Listen, listen, I, listen. Mm -hmm. Why, with that conversation, would you let somebody's family know that, hey, something's wrong? I wasn't calling to let them know something was wrong. I was calling and letting them know, like, can you get him, will he pick up the phone to you? Because, like, I, he told me he'd call me back. I didn't think nothing was like it because was you were concerned? On. Yes, I was very concerned. About what was going on? Yeah, because it was like, no, I was not getting no response. Because right after I heard that, I called Lisa's phone. And there was no pickup. And then I called her a couple more times, no answer. So I texted her, like, are you okay? And she didn't answer. Then I kept calling Johnny's phone. Zach said he was doing the same also. And they wasn't picking up. So that's when I started calling you know, his best friend to see if he would answer to his best friend and he was just ignoring us because he didn't want to share pills or, you know what I mean? That's what I thought all it was. Are he you? was like, I'm going to call you back. Okay, so you go and get in dad. <clears throat> mm -hmm. John. He ends up calling me. I never called them. They called me. 
Johnny's dad called my phone. After? I called Sharita. After Sharita called his mom and dad, mm -hmm. then dad calls you. And I explained to him the conversation, and I was like, look, I'm driving back out there. If you want me to come get you, I have no problem with coming to get you. And he was like, yeah, come get me. <coughs> I was like, I'm right here by Taco Bell. I'm burned. I'm turning around now. And I turned around, and I picked him up. Um, I got out of the car, walked up to the door, and got him, and we drove out there. So there's... <coughs> Now, with whatever he's told, mm -hmm. do you think with that conversation, that would make him grab a weapon? Um, I didn't think he would grab a weapon, but he ended up having a weapon on him. What's, what's the urgency to grab a weapon and get out there? I have no now, idea. It all comes from your phone conversation with Johnny now. Well, the only thing I explained to him was... Um, he called and asked me what was going on, and I said, look, I said, I called Johnny. He was supposed to come pick me up, and um, I said, when he answered the phone, he didn't say hello, and I explained to him what he said, and I was like, he told me he called me back. I was like, I've been trying to reach him, and they're not answering, and that's when I asked him, like, do you want to ride with me, and he said yes. That was the only thing we talked about. The response of Clark's father sounds strange. If Tiffany is being honest about the content of the conversation, a possible explanation is that the father had more information and maybe knew Clark had been having trouble with someone and was worried things had escalated. We didn't talk about anything else. That I just told him what, what I heard Johnny say and that was it. Where were you at when that phone conversation with John, the dad? Um, I was right there at Taco Bell on Vernon Airport because that's where I turned around to pick him up at. I was at the light. Where were you looking for Johnny? Where'd you guys go looking for Johnny? Um, I drove past like just a couple friends' houses that we would be at. <clears throat> when you called Sharita. All right, let's get back to this so first. Okay. When did you call you called Johnny when you were walking to the store? No, before we walked to the store. We From were Zach's, still in house? Zach's house? Yes. All right, and you call Johnny, and that's when he says all this. Mm -hmm. All right? You still walk to the store, though? Yes. To get a pack of cigarettes. Mm -hmm. And then you walk, as you're walking back to the house, you're trying to call Johnny, you're trying yeah. to call Lisa. Is Zach with you at that time? Yes. Is he trying to call at the same time? He said he was. He said he was. Was trying. he on his phone? He was on his phone, yes. Yeah. Does he call your voicemail and get your voice messages? Can he get into my voicemail? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because he knows my password and everything. So Why? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you're walking back to the house. Mm -hmm. You get back to the house. What time, all right, what time was this you're going to the store? Um, 1045. Anywhere from 10.45 to 11 o'clock. All right, you get back to the house. You're back at Zach's house now. Mm -hmm. Well, this is where, did you go to, how did you get Renee's car? Um, we, I had Zach go in and give me the keys so I could go pick up some money. You give them to you? Mm hmm did you guys discuss you getting some pills? I told him I was going to get some pills, and me and him started arguing because I told him I wanted to drive and um, drive to Johnny and Lisa's and then go get some pills, and he was screaming he wanted me to go get pills first, so I just ended up leaving Zach behind and just went by myself. So he wanted you to get pills before you went to Johnny and Lisa's. Mm -hmm. All right. So you're at Zach's house. What time is it now? Um, 11.05. You leave. Where'd you go? Um, I drove on Broadway Street and picked up a cigarette from my niece. You just bought a pack of cigarettes. I know, but I left a pack of cigarettes with Zach because okay. I was pissed. We was, ar we was okay. arguing. So where'd you go on Broadway? Um, right across the street from Danny Thomas Park to my niece's house. What's your niece's name? Alexis. Alexis. Kennedy. 
How old is she? Uh, 16. Too young to smoke. Yeah, but her dad allows that. Okay. <clears throat> so you go over there, you get a cigarette. Mm -hmm. Then where'd you go? To Ogden Street to meet Vic. Would you recognize Vic if I showed you a picture of Vic? Um, I better be able to. Yes, Does he have a brother? I don't know. I only know him. Like I said, I met him when Is I was in a nice house? the strip club. Yeah, it's a nice house, but he said that was his friend's house. Who's his friend? I don't know his name. All right. And I'm going to ask you this one time. Okay. You get $100. Mm -hmm. You don't get $100 for nothing. Yeah. Okay. This is what happened. Vic had wrecked my... I was driving and Rick, Vic pulled out in front of me, so I hit his car, or uh, our cars collided. And he told me that he would pay me if um, I didn't turn it into his insurance or whatever. So I never turned it into insurance. So here and there, he gave me money for it. How much? Um, I know I've got approximately like $300 from him already for the car. But that night he gave you? Only $100 that night. I caught him. There wasn't anything else going on in that house that you got $100? No. Were no. there other people in that house? Um, his friend was upstairs sleeping, but I don't know who that was. I don't know the guy's name. The guy who lives in the house. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. No, I did not have sex with him okay. for no money. <laughs> All right. I'm at, well. The whole situation just feels odd. Minors are involved, which at some point will need some scrutiny. But the main focus right now is that the reactions and motivations don't seem to follow a logical pattern. I want to know everything yeah. that you... So, he gave you the money from a car accident. Mm -hmm. Whose car got in an accident? Who, Mine. Where, where was, where's your car been through all this? Then? Um, I ended up having to jump my car. All right. What time did you get over to Vic's house on Ogden? 11.30. You get your hundred bucks. I go straight to Zach's house. You didn't stop and buy pills? Nope. So you're at Zach's house now again. So where it's 23 what? Or I'm sorry, 11.30. I don't know the address. No, no time. Oh, no. Um, I sat and talked to Vic for probably about 20 minutes. So you got back to Zach's house at midnight? Um, about five till midnight, yeah. All this time, are you checking your voicemail or are you doing anything with your phone yes. trying to get a hold of Johnny and Lisa? Yes, I'm still calling Johnny and You're Lisa. You're still calling Johnny and Lisa. All right. So you get back to Zach's house. What's Zach doing? Is Zach there? Yeah, Zach's there. That is, Zach is there. Is he worried about Johnny and Lisa at all? He asked me if I got a hold of them. Okay. And I asked him, I was like, have you been calling him? And he said, yeah, he, was, he kept calling him. And I was like, well, I've been calling him too. And they still haven't picked up to me. And I was like, um, I'm driving out there. Okay, so you you say I'm going to drive out there. What time do you leave Zach's house? Um, twelve. Right after I pulled in there and went upstairs and got Zach, we left. All right, and then we know that at quarter after or twenty after you stopped got gas. No, well, right after I left Zach, so twelve o'clock. I say about we'll say twelve o five, twelve ten ish. We pulled out of there. I went straight to the gas station and got gas. Okay. Then from there, from getting gas. All right, hold on a second. Okay. Then from getting gas, then we went and got pills. Zach pumped the gas, you said? Yes. Okay. So then you go to, where did you say, Fearing? Fearing at the corner store. It's called Corner Store. It's the name of the store. Do you make a phone call in between leaving the gas station and going to the corner store to meet whoever to get pills? When did you set that up to get the pills? Zach did that as we were getting gas. Who did he call? Somebody uh -huh. that works there or somebody that lives no, by there? No, somebody who lives by there. All right. So Zach calls for pills. Yes. Okay. Then from the pills, I drove straight out there. What time do you think you were there? Um... I say about 12.20 right there. Then you go to Johnny and Lisa's. Because it's right down the street, so yeah. Yep, then I went to Johnny and Lisa's house. How'd you get there? Which way'd you go? Straight down the airport. Airport to? 
airport to um, Highland, Savannah. To? Um, I don't know the name of the street. I turn right at it, though. You take it all the way down and turn. So you go airport highway to Holland, Sylvania. Turn left. Turn left. Then you go down a little bit, and then I turn right. Turn right. That's like where the, like, the little overpass is. Okay. Like the little bridge. And then I turn left. And I think when you turn left, you turn into her little, like, neighborhood thing. Okay. And then take it to her. What time do you think you got there? Um... 12.40, 12 12.45. 12 All right. You go there, you knock on the doors, you knock on the windows. No, just the door. All right, you just knock that. on the door. Mm -hmm. At the same time, though, I remember you saying, what, you're calling? Yes, I was. All right. What door did you go to? To the front door. Because you, when we went there to play pool or whatever, we went in through the garage and the garage door was shut. So I just walked to the front door and I rang the doorbell at first and there was no answer through the doorbell. So I pulled the door open and started knocking. And then um, there still was no answer. So I had like looked in the, there's like a side window right here. I had looked in and didn't see nobody. So I just left. On the day that you went there to play pool, that t how many times have you been to Johnny and Lisa's house? One time. You remember to get how to get there from that one time you were there? Well, I had drove with Johnny out there. I just never went in the house. So you had been to the house before? Yeah, one other All time. Right. The day that you were there, that day that Johnny or Lisa's parents left, you were at that house? Um, I was there on Thursday. Right. I think you told us the first time we talked to you, you took a tour of that house. Well, Johnny wanted to give a tour of the house, and he, like him and Zach walked the house, and I only walked upstairs. I didn't walk the whole entire house, because I was like, um, Lisa was like, come on, let's go smoke a cigarette, because I was like, I don't want to walk the whole house. So no, Zach and Johnny only walked the house. Me and Lisa was outside smoking. When you left that night, you got, I remember you saying around 1 o'clock that night mm -hmm. you left to go home, you and Zach. Did Zach talk about the inside of that house? Did he say anything? Did you ever hear Johnny talking about a safe in that house? Never once heard Johnny talk about a safe in the house. Never. Tiffany doesn't know very much, but there's no reason to think that Clark would have brought up the safe in casual conversation. The timing of her visit to the house is sad in a way. If she had seen something through the windows, could Clark and Straub have been saved? Or would Tiffany have just wound up as a third victim? I never heard Johnny talk about money being in that house. The only thing that Johnny ever bragged about was Lisa's family had money. Okay. That was the only thing. All right. Let me ask you, when you went outside to smoke, why'd you go outside? Do you want to talk to us? Only thing I want to know is what the, what is it about? All right. And that's it. Other than that, I'm away from my lawyer. I'm not talking at all. I didn't do nothing. I don't know what this is about. Like I said, they would have called me or sent me something in the mail. I could have come down here like Sorry. a civil human being. I didn't have to be humiliated like that. All right, Sam. Hands. Nobody meant to humiliate you. Right. You know how you know how that shit runs. You're in you're in criminal justice. Yes. You know how sometimes things jump off and go down. Okay. Couldn't be helped. That was not an intention to make you look small. So what, my face just came on your guys' desk and said, go get that man, and well, you guys just went and came no, together? We'll, we'll get into that, all right? You, you got to be patient with us, too, all right? Who is your attorney? Got a few of them. Okay, who, who, would, who would you use if you needed it? It, it just depends. It, it really does. Who who's, who's you used in the past, then? Jane Roman. Okay. Tom Stebbins. Stebbins, okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? 
you know. Okay. Do you have much time to hang with people? What do you mean? You got a lot of friends? I know a lot of people. Okay. And do you hang with them, do things with them? For the most part. Okay. Detective's going to run a few names by you, okay? Let us know if you know these people or not, okay? You know a guy named uh, Johnny Clark? You don't know John Clark? No. You know a young lady named Lisa Straub? No, don't know Johnny no. Clark. You don't know Lisa Straub? Straub? Did you get over in South Toledo very much? Williams should have gone with his first instinct and waited for his lawyer, because right off the bat, he's lying. Multiple witnesses can confirm that he knew Clark and Straub, and denying that fact is just a huge red flag. No. No. I used to live in South Toledo. Probably, was I just, me and my mom just bought the house, and that was two months ago on Prouty Street. Okay. How long did you stay over there? Me and my mom was there no more than three or four months. Tops. My you know, mom was living with this woman, and I moved in with them because I didn't have no place to go. My mom took me in, that's where I was living at. You know a young lady named Lindsay Straub? I don't know any of them Straubs. Okay. You ever get out in Springfield Township? You ever get that far south? Holland, Ohio. I stay on the east side. Okay. He's going to show you a picture of a house. See if this house looks familiar to you again. I have to get that. Who is your mom married to? Which one she, of them? She was married. He, he died, though. Yeah, right. One of those boys died. I knew there their parents. A, there was a couple of them that died, but um, Larry. Larry? Larry I knew died. Larry. Larry died. Sure. He raised me with my mom most of my life since I was five. Well, Larry was in and out of his scrapes, but for the most part, Larry was all right. He, was a, he had his problems being an alcoholic. Well, Larry was that. always very respectful with me, and I was always respectful with Larry, and I appreciated that. That's as good as we have. Yeah, that's good. That house looked familiar to you at all? No. Have you ever been to that house since Springfield Township? No. Okay. You sure? I'm positive. All right. All right. Good. I'm 100% positive. All right. Some more names? Yeah. You know what? I'm going to throw some names at you. You know, you tell me, you know, you know a Tone Watson? You know Tone? Anthony, Tone, always hangs I out with a, couple, a... I know a couple of Tonys, but not, you don't go by Tone. Well, okay. Anthony, Tony, um, hangs with a dude, mixed dude, Zach, Fat Zach. You know, Who, Fat who's Zach. the Tonys you know? Yeah. I know one from the east side, um, Starla, my baby mom's other baby dad, Anthony Wolf. Wolf, W-O-L-F-E, or... They spell their name different. W O E L F. W U L F. Okay. W U L F. Yeah. That's Starla's. That was her. That's her other son's baby's daddy. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good. Whatever you want okay. to call it. Okay. What about a Chris? You know any Chris? Is Chris Watson? Chris. You don't know this kid Zach. Fat Zach, they call him, he's kind of a mix, white kid, black kid, about 17. You got some pictures? Yeah, yeah we, we, got, we got some pictures yeah, we got around, some pictures yeah, we can get you some pictures. Um, names, I don't, I mean, somebody says what about his nicknames? name is Frank, and oh, yeah, he's, boy. you yeah. know what I'm saying? See, somebody, I don't remember. Frank, and his actual name is Sam. I'm terrible at names. You know what I mean? So what, I really don't What about know. a dude named Peanut? How about a nickname? Somebody like Peanut or Manny. I mean, they call Manny. No. You deal much with dudes from south? No. South side? I'm east side or all the way. You guys see it. The east Can side and south side does not get along at all. Like, seriously. <laughs> well, I, go, I know. I man, stay on my side of the water. The, no, the, this, like east was, side with the bricks here. Is that, are you a, a member of any gang you know, or anything? It was just a design. That what the what does it had. signify? It? Yeah, well, I mean, what's it? what's it mean? I'll, I'll be all the way honest with you, probably about a group of five or six of us 
growing up in elementary, we played football. After that, we branched off getting into trouble, smoking weed, you know, doing what kids do. You all have the same tattoo? Yeah. Do you? Some of you guys designed. Yeah. Do you remember when you had that applied? <sighs> Shit, I had to be like... Shit. 7th grade, probably like 13, going on 14 years old. Okay. Really? I'm 24 now, so 10 did years. Did you do it yourself or? No. Um, How'd you do that? Who did it? His name was Big Jim. Who did okay. that? What Williams doesn't seem to realize is that he is telling them he is or was in an informal gang and they're going to be looking that up to see if it's connected with any criminal activity. That's who did the, this one. Anyway, what do you do, just make out a design, design, take it to him? No, he had the design itself that I seen. Make sure I get the impressions pictures. It'll help you because I ain't for shit for names either. So uh, I can kind of relate to you there. I just don't do shit for names. But somebody like, you know, we recently had a high school reunion. I could sit there and go through the picture and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I couldn't put names on them. I couldn't do it. So how long has your dad been dead? Shit, I, my son had... It hurts me because I didn't get a chance to see him. I took him over there and he was real sick. So it happened probably about Sammy's five. I thought of your dad. Uh, I thought of your dad recently here at the Greek Fest because that's generally where I'd run into him. Probably right back in 06. Yeah. I, that's about right. I'd say 06. So. This would be Zach. You know that dude? No. No. This is a dude named Chris. No. Never seen him. And this is Anthony or Tom. No. Never, Never come across these three. Neither one of them. Neither Neither these guys. Okay, never. Is there any reason any of these guys would say they know you? No. Okay. I have no reason to know them at okay. all. Good. I don't do Good. nothing. Like I said, I've been going to school. I mean, you can, my mom can vouch for me on that one. Huh? I've been sitting in the house. I ain't been doing nothing. And Starla stays with you over there, right? For right now, but she just got her place in the ravines. We're going through some stuff right now. Me and her is not going to be together because... She got caught up in some bullshit last year. I was driving her car. She asked me to drop her off somewhere. I dropped her off, and the same people that pulled up on me today pulled over, pulled me over, took me to jail for promoting prostitution, and I got out the next day. And I left. I asked her about it. She said, "Just leave it alone." Me and her really haven't been, haven't had the love for her, I should say. Why do Ever you think, since then, do you think she was doing she, something like that? She lied to me. I, if she got caught in an operation, well, obviously she, something was going on that I didn't know. So you're, you're, she asked you for a ride, you dropped her off, and yeah, she was actually in, yeah. into the prostitution thing. She, she got caught. Oh, you got prostitute. nailed. Yeah, and that like it just made my love for her. Not did she get arrested? Did she get arrested? Yeah, I she got did. arrested and she got arrested, and it's like. I don't know, it's not been the same. I haven't been able to see my six month old. That's why I've been going to school. Like, I don't want to live like that. She hid all that from you. Yeah, and it just really hurts me because she told me, oh, I'm going to see my friend. Or, and I, But I needed a car today, so I was like, well, let me drop you off. And she let me drop her off, and so happened, I get caught. How long have you been staying on Kelsey? Me and my mom just moved there at the end of July. Okay. July. Where were you staying before that? Where were you staying before you moved there? 640, I want to say 648 Prouty. And how long did you live there from when to when? Do you remember? You would probably have to ask the woman that I, I couldn't even say. Did you rent or something? Like my mom, my mom lived there with her friend and I more or less just, my mom said that she had let me stay with her for a little bit. I stayed in the same room as my mom and everything. I shared the bed with her. We stayed there for, I don't know, because she just got in that place. I helped her move from Western. She was living on Western. 
Remember the address on Western? No, it was a beat up house on the it was on the corner. Um there's a stop and go right there. It's right down past Libby. Okay. I can't think of the street's name. Oh, I know where you're talking. You know it's right on the right hand side and the street goes like into uh, a dead end. Or Gibbons or one of those. And then there's yeah. like a little creek down there. Yeah. Yeah. Gibbons Hillside. Yeah. All those streets back there. So it had to be tough for you in the south end. I in, didn't I didn't like get out. Side. I didn't get out for a, I didn't really do nothing. Yeah. Go to school. You could even ask the I went to school, and that's all okay. I really did. So it wasn't tough on you. I had to I had to do something before I wasn't doing nothing at all. And that's how I just looked at it. The detectives are trying to get a good picture of his history and who else he is potentially connected to. He's already had several run-ins with the law, including domestic violence charges. I got two little boys to take care of. I don't want them growing up being hoodlums. How do you do the child support? I haven't been paying child support. I paid, what was it, 200 and some dollars on my child support. I took that out of my grant money and okay. paid for it. Okay. The grant money for school? Yeah. You're supposed to use it for school. Yeah. Well, I paid for all my books. I got everything taken care of that I needed to get taken care of, but I took out loans, too. Oh, I, okay. I accepted my loans, too, so I got to keep my loans. They gave me back, like, 40, 300 or something. So that's what I've so been you, living off of. So now the grants, you don't have to pay that back. No, the grants. But I the loans, pay. you're gonna have to pay that back when I when I graduate. When yeah. you graduate, how far along are you in school? I just started this semester. Oh, you did just yeah. start. Just Can I ask you how much it does it cost to go to Owens as a full time student? Twenty with my books and stuff. I want to say it was like twenty seven hundred, and like pretty much my Pell Grant took care of all of that. Okay. Well, what happened to you aside today, there's some things that Mr. Ross and I would like to talk to you about, okay? Uh, we ran some names by you. Um, you've been advised of your rights and stuff. Um, you're saying you've never been to that house. Can we get to the to the meat of what we want to talk to you about then? We we no problem at that house last winter. Did you hear anything about it? No. Okay. A couple of kids were found dead in there. Uh, young oh, adults, and. Uh, they were probably the victim of a burglary. They got bum rushed in the place. You know what we're talking about, bum rushed. Somebody just crashes in on you, maybe robs you, burglarizes your house. I mean, you know what we're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Okay. So that's what happened to these young couples. So how did my name get brought up in this? Science. I don't understand how. Well. Remember when these guys respond to a scene and they go in there, you're a criminal justice major, right? You cordon off the area, everybody that is involved in that scene goes in, they start collecting evidence, okay? These guys collected a lot of evidence and they had a lot of evidence tested for DNA. Do you know what DNA is? Okay, explain to us what you think DNA is. You, you, saliva, whatever. Saliva, poop, piss, skin cells, hair, follicles, all that stuff gives up an individual's individual characteristics. Do you buy that based on what you've been taught in school? I haven't, I'm only doing my, like, Basic okay. courses. Right. I'm not doing. They nothing. will tell you soon enough that DNA is like fingerprints. You know, there's no two fingerprints that are alike. There's no two DNAs that are alike. Each of us have a separate one. If they tested Jeff here, his had come up with a certain row of numbers that means something to the scientists. They tested you, 
you'd come up with a different bunch of numbers in a row that means something to the scientists. But yours would be like Jeff's. If I spit on a cotton swab and they did my DNA, numbers would come up. Mine would not be like yours. Mine would not be like his. We're all separate. Just like if they took our fingerprints tonight, your fingerprint would be different from Jeff's, be different from mine, mine would be different from him and from you. You understand where we're going? It's unique to the individual. There's no two DNAs that are alike. Totally understand it. Okay. Okay. Now, when these guys collected a lot of pieces of evidence in there that were involved in this crime, they sent it down to Bowling Green for testing. Okay? And items in that scene came back with your DNA on it. Okay? Well, how do you explain that? How can we explain that? I have no idea. You've never been to that house? Never been you to that house. You don't know those kids? I don't know them people. And your DNA's in that house? I don't know. You have no idea? No. Nope. Do you understand where that puts you? Do you understand where this is going? You know, knowing your father, I don't think it's you. I don't think you have that stuff in you. But here you are, you're going to school, you're trying to take care of your two boys, you're living with your mom. Things get out of hand expense-wise. For Christ's sakes, he and I pay on a mortgage. I had $500 worth of brakes go out last month, and then I had to put four new tires on my car this month. It really set me behind, and I work. Okay? Now, when you got those kind of heavy problems, you discuss them with people. I don't give a shit. I do. Hell, I discuss them with my wife. I discuss them with my friends. Where's the best place I can go for tires? Where's the best place I can go for brakes? This is the kind of shit that builds up in our lives. And for me to say it didn't stress me, or for him to say that a mortgage doesn't stress him, and that sometimes we get in where we feel like we can't breathe, it's bullshit, because it happens to all of us. You got problems with your boys going to school, not being able to support them. Your girlfriend, mother of one of your children, hides a bunch of shit on you. You don't even know what she's about till she tells you. You discuss this stuff with people. I don't give a shit. You do. You're a human being. You say, I got problems. This is what my problems are. Okay? Follow me? Somebody says, hey, I think I can open a door for you. I think we can get you out of some of these problems. We can get you some money. Okay? And people discuss this with you and say, all we want you to do is maybe watch the door or watch them. Make sure it doesn't get out of hand because we're going to rip them off. We're going to get some money and you're going to get part of that money. All right? Now the ball's in your court. This is serious shit. This is very serious shit. What do you want to do with it? What do you want to do with your life? Where do you want to go from here? Can you tell us where you want to go from here? Do you want to cooperate in this investigation? Because you're in. You're into your chin. Okay? We want your help. We want to be able to say, this guy right here, father of two children who had a lot of problems, realized the hole that he had dug for himself, and he wanted out of that hole. And he reached out his hand to us, and we took him by the hand. We helped him out of that hole. All right? You follow me? Mm -hmm. Okay. How do you want to work with this? This is the most. What you're saying. This is the most important moment of your life. This is the most important day of your life. Little did you know that when you got up this morning. Little did you know when you got up this morning, when you went out the house, when you said goodbye to your mom or whatever happened, or the last time you saw your kids. Little did you know that today, the 22nd of September, 2011, would be the most important day of your life when it all comes crashing down around you.
All right? Now, you say those officers out there humiliated you out there. All right? How's it going to look to the people out there when they find out you're in here and you're not helping yourself? You're humiliating yourself even more. What are these people going to think of you? What are your sons going to think of you? What is your mother going to think of you? These are the things you have to consider. You have to keep turning this shit around in your mind and say, wait a minute, this isn't me. This is something I got caught up in, but I'm going to tell you guys the truth. I'm going to lay it out there like a man, like I'm supposed to. I wasn't. Williams is in a bad place, to say the least. He has motive enough to be involved in a robbery, and there are witnesses and DNA evidence to prove he has already lied about his connection with the victims, which places him as a prime suspect. In July of 2012, Sam Williams was convicted of aggravated murder, burglary, and kidnapping. He received a sentence of life with no possibility of parole. To this day, he still maintains he was set up. The case is still open as police believe at least two other people were involved. Somewhere out there, someone knows what happened. Someone still needs to be brought to justice.